it's time to start. According to the conference program, uh, now we have a welcome word uh, from the uh, conference organizer. Um, no, it seems to be to me, to me the, uh, one of the uh, organizers. Uh, what is uh, some kind of ACNS uh, conference? The Academy of Cognitive and Natural Sciences in non-governmental organization um, based mainly in career uh, The main goal of our organization, uh, our mission, is to establish communication between scientists in various fields of interdisciplinary, uh, interdisciplinary research, um, especially in educational sciences. We strive to ensure free access uh, to research results, promote their wide dissemination and practical implementation uh, in a cheap, free and mobile way uh, as possible. Uh, the head of uh, ACNS uh, is action dean of uh, uh, faculty of natural sciences uh, at Kriverich State Pedagogical University, uh, Pavlone Ciporenko. No, he acts as dean just now um, in his uh, workplace. Um, uh, so. Uh, this uh, conference uh, will be uh, completely free uh, for all participants, uh, mainly uh, uh, during efforts of uh, all uh, authors. Uh, we tried uh, to uh, make our conference uh, even during the war. Uh, so, uh, our conference uh, has uh, two levels of presentations, uh, pre-conference workshops and main conference. Yesterday, uh, we have an uh, exciting uh, workshop on digital transformation of education, on education um, uh, hosted uh, at Zhitomir uh, State Polytechnical University. Um, uh, the main workshop chair, Tatiana Anatolievna Vakaluk, is... Um, uh, uh, welcome all, but just in a <laughs> blackout state, uh, as uh, most of the uh, participants. Uh, two uh, other uh, pre-conference workshops, it's a uh, uh, cloud-based smart technologies for open education, uh, CS Toy, uh, and uh, I would like to introduce uh, the uh, workshop chair, uh, Maria Pavlina Shishkina, your welcome word. Unfortunately, uh, Maria Paulina um, just joined it at some minutes, uh, but uh, uh, for the um, uh, fourth day, uh, it's uh, uh, she in a blackout state. Uh, so, uh, so the next step, uh, I see um, at least uh, one of uh, workshop participants, Oksana Vitalievna Klachko. Uh, our greetings. Uh, oh, uh, we, we see Maria Pavlovna. Maria Pavlovna, uh, you are here. Oh, uh, no, uh, uh, connection happens. <laughs> um, so. Uh, Andrei Mikolaevich, uh, could you please uh, uh, to start a uh, video of uh, video presentation of Oksana Vitalievna? Dear colleagues, dear conference organizers, thank you for the opportunity to present the report. Dear colleagues, we bring to your attention a report on the topic an IoT system based on open APIs and geolocation for human health data analysis. The authors of the study are Oksana Klashko, Vasil Fedoret, Maxim Mazin, Yuri Virkov.
at this stage of the development of Internet of Things technologies, more and more attention is paid to the development of healthcare applications in IoT systems, as they provide an opportunity to remotely monitor the state of human health in real time. Demand of professional use of IoT system for, for real-time health monitoring in relation to environmental conditions, including environmental risks, is present in many fields of activity, science, and education. There is an urgent need to develop and implement such IoT systems that would expand the possibilities of air monitoring for the present origin in the environment and accordingly present data on the level of their concentration in representative and use plan deformance. Monitoring of origins of plant origin which are represented by the pollen of some plants in the important in this regard. The purpose of the research is to design and implement an IoT system based on open rights and geolocation human health data analysis. In the process of work, research methods may use analysis, synthesis, methods of system analysis, methods of communication theory, development of a system that supports Internet of Things technologies, modeling using the Unified Modeling Language, UML, in particular to build a UML diagram of precedence, mathematical modeling, computer modeling, monitoring and data analysis. Good computing, open API and wireless access methods were used to solve the tasks. The methods of combining devices based on open APIs using smart gadgets and methodological keys. A smartphone with airliness technologies was proposed. It has been used to track and analyze data related to human health anywhere and anytime. Interfacing with methodological data to provide operational data warnings. In real time, of the likely presence of threats of human health. The study considered two main groups of environmental factors as elements of the environmental system that influence the human body. Once abiotic, temperature, humidity, solar radiation, atmospheric pressure, chemical air pollution, etc. Two, biotic. The serological geographic information system Natural Blue was used to quantify environmental factors using open APIs. In accordance with the research goal, the task was set to develop and implement a new anthropo-digital system to preserve human health by building an IoT system as open monitoring and analysis data related to human health, tasking into account geolocation. For this purpose, it was planned to use smart gadgets, fitness graphs and, and smartphone, and meteorological geographic information system. The software application based on open APIs provides Collection and analysis of sensor data using plant gadgets. The software application based on open APIs provides 1. Collection and analysis of sensor data using plant gadgets. 2. Real time data process analysis of environmental factors of order to identify threats of human health. 3. Generation of warning message to the user's mobile phone. This system implements a warning about the threat of a person being in an environment with polluted air. 
the human diagram of precedence described to IoT system as a conceptual level and precedence a scheme of relation between the actors and the precedence that characterize the, the capabilities of the IoT system. 1. Relative indicators of hard rate number of steps and this distance covered. 2. Obtain data on the state of external environment. Monitoring of the allocation center. Data in 3. 4. Processing and analysis of the state of the external environment based on the allocation data in order to detect the rise of human tiles. 5. Receiving warning signals about the uh, threat to human health. 6. Receiving a notification about the uh, actions aimed at preserving health. So, the architecture of the IoT system proposed by us is a network mode. It is assumed the following are integrated in this model. Smart gadget. We use the Apple Watch for fitness tracker as a smart card. Smartphone. Scala independent integrated meteorological information system. Food service used to host a software application for monitoring and data analysis. Also, for meteorological data monitoring and analysis, we have developed a software application based on open APIs, which prepares the data of the uh, meteorological geoinformation system. Data analysis is carried out to provide real-time operational warning about the probable presence of stress of, to human health. The quantitative assessment of environmental factors is carried out automatically online. Taking into account human geolocation data and data on the state of the surrounding environment, which can be obtained using open APIs of geoinformation geo system. The software application based on open APIs that analyzes sensor data and geolocation data of smart data and meteorological geoinformation system. Analyzes them and generates messages about possible threats to human health developed in the Python programming language. In order to evaluate performance, we conducted functional testing on the IoT system. Performance of the IoT system was tested on various test data. Geographic coordinates, state of air pollution, concentration of pollen in the air. As a result of the test, it was accessed. The IoT system returns the expected result in the response of the specific entered parameter. The system showed a high efficiency of 100 on the specific test geographic data. Various parameters of the air pollution state, including the limit parameters. As a result of testing the IoT system according to the air quality index, it was determined that the MD's Meteor Blue system shows only an only a background index. Uh, this IoT system does not define a roadside or traffic. Therefore, as a result, it is tested near hardware. It was found that the system is not effective in use. For the purpose of testing the system, data obtained were previously formed as a similar Apple Watch for fitness tract, which determines a person's geolocation or cities. If the is pollen in the air, pollen grass, pollen beach, pollen body. The system is showing a message about these dangers, indicating the level of pollen concentration in the air. The concentration of pollen in the air can be 
interested by the wine. Also, the plant becomes more allergic if their air is polluted. The use of the developed IoT system can help prevent and uh, pretend cases therapeutic value. This is necessary for the prevention of pathologies, uh, pathologies uh, related to the state of the external environment. In the particular, the presence and level of the concentration of substances that can be allergens. It is important to use the developed IoT system for the prevention of allergies, including first of all pollutions as well as other pathologies in which an allergic component is present. One such disorder is an allergic component is a signal out bronchial asthma. Thus, bronchial asthma is present not only as a medical but also as an ecological problem. The important preventive aspect of which can be solved by the developed IoT system. The recommended cause of the air quality index and the European Common Air Quality Index were used to generate the message. According to the value of the air quality index, the system ensures a message about the threat to human health and the recommendation for the action in this situation. In conclusion, the developed application based on open APIs using smart gadget and meteorological gifts in the process of work generates a message about the dangers of human health related to uh, the precedence of pollen in the air, pollen grass, pollen beach, pollen oil, indicating its level concentration in the air. The presence of air quality problems if the air quality indicators exceed the permissible standards. Functional testing of the IoT system was conducted of various test data, geographical coordinate, extent of air pollution, concentration of pollen in the air. Based on the given test geographic data, various parameters of the state of air pollution put in the limit parameters. The system showed high efficiency. However, as a result of testing the IoT system according to the air quality index, it was determined uh, that the MGS Metal Blue system shows as uh, a background index, therefore, the system is not effective in use along with this mode. The IoT system for tracking data related to human health is aimed at prevention, preventing uh, the problem of negative effects of environmental factors of human health, which is implemented by generating warning signals about the possible there's and the reminders task actions uh, I'm at uh, the preserving health. The implementation of this IoT system has significant methodological and technological potential, which can be used to improve the effectiveness of health care both in extreme conditions and in conditions of sustainable existence. First of all, it is relevant during and after uh, the COVID-19 parameter. This development is significant of improvement for improving the quality of life. The system developed uh, by use can also be considered as one of the ways of introducing innovations in the field of healthcare. Both theoretical and practical results on inclusions, uh, proposals, uh, and recommendations formulated in the study can be used to improve and increase the effectiveness of the human health care system. For example, during and after the COVID-19 pandemic. In the educational process of training and reminding of teachers of informatic, physical, cultural, ecological, 
health basic doctors uh, rehabilitation teachers in practice in uh, technologies of rehabilitation medicine ecology in the scientific research in this form as one of the ways of introduction innovations in the IT sphere and the sphere of healthcare in everyday life. Dear colleagues, the report is our thank you for the your attention. Many thanks for your talk, Oksana Vitalevna. Um, uh, can you uh, can you talk uh, or your uh, internet connection is still unstable? Uh, yes, I have now internet connection, but I don't know. <laughs> Ex excellent. <laughs> um, uh, so, dear colleagues, uh, your question to Oksana Vitalevna. Uh, yes, uh, thank you very much. I see question in uh, now in uh, from uh, Minty Irina uh, an uh, interesting and useful development has it been tested? Yes, it has been tested for um, uh, data special uh, tested data uh, data tested in uh, geography uh, geographic coordinates and another dangerous uh, this pollen uh, another we have t uh, another tested and um, uh, high and uh, <laughs> A small data is uh, dangerous, um, and uh, this testing uh, in process. This testing we um, uh, see in, uh, the, the system has so high performance, but uh, it uh, not high performance from roads uh, hardware because uh, small. Um, uh, uh, distance and the system not use this problem. Uh, no, they, they tested uh, functional test, only functional test. We did only functional test. Um, how many people took part it in? Uh, yes, uh, we um, tested with four people. Uh, these people, I and my colleagues who pre prepare this <laughs> article and um, this uh, uh, since this problem uh, but we tested uh, uh, with testing data data test have a file with data test and geographic geographic coordinates another another and another parameters uh, what the result we obtain <laughs> I, I now i say about what result it's good result but not very good with the road around road and hardware well, thank you very much for your question Paniri. <laughs> and Sergei Alexeyevich, very glad very glad colleagues and Sergei Alexeyevich, see you in this conference Thank you. One more question in the chat. Uh, what kinds of healthcare parameters may be detected by the system? Uh, we uh, thank you very much. Uh, the system is um, only uh, test dangerous and uh, healthcare parameters uh, we have um, on uh, smart um, uh, gadgets and um, tested um, um, <laughs> um, Uh, вибачте, я скажу, бо я uh, Василь Миколаївич не зміг під'єднатися, от зараз ходив, пробував мені телефонував, них від, відімкнули інтернет на роботі, він планував, да. І це цю частину знає більше він. Uh, проблема була в частоті пульсу, наскільки я знаю. От, і тиск, от вимірювався тиск і частота пульсу. Також проблема була в бронхіальній астмі, коли були загрози. Я прошу пробачення, але я да, не фахівець. Чекали Василя Миколаївича, він би краще пояснив. Частота пульсу і от саме для людей, які мають алергію, то була проблема. 
От коли там навіть достатньо, так як пояснював Сергій Олексійович, маленької частки пилку і вже може викликати алерт. Дякую вам за питання. Thank you very much for this detailed answer. Now it is clear this point about your development. I think this is very interesting and very just breakthrough development. Thank you very much for your report. I appreciate it very much. Oh yes, I'm very glad to. Thank you. Thank you very much. Many, many thanks. One more remark. I would like to introduce one more specialist from Vinnytsia. She works at Vinnytsia Medical University, Victoria Rodinkova. It's a leading specialist in on the allergic decision in Ukraine. The system which was presented really inter it is a really interdisciplinary research. Oh, for example, uh, at the moment uh, we have uh, dangerous uh, from um, fire explosion products, ongoing Russian invasion, invasion in Ukraine. Uh, so the system uh, can be used uh, for uh, no, uh, to get uh, some data uh, on the risk uh, risk uh, for uh, future decision uh, ongoing risks uh, etc. Uh, moreover, um, uh, uh, last week our university submitted to the Ministry of Science and Education um, a project uh, on uh, uh, methodical system. Uh, for digitalization of uh, geographic education and using such uh, mobile uh, meteorological stations uh, uh, and uh, other devices uh, together with geographic information system is uh, one of the leading idea uh, for this project. Uh, moreover, Yesterday uh, at the uh, previous workshop, uh, the team uh, from uh, Kyiv, Irina Zinoyeva, uh, Andrei Yatsishin, Anna Yatsishin, and others uh, have introduced mm -hmm. uh, the uh, uh, experience of using uh, geographical information system and uh, lots of detectors uh, at Kyiv uh, to uh, prepare the specialist in uh, renewable energies, uh, geography, etc. Uh, um, despite the decisions, some decisions of national agency uh, on <laughs> so calling uh, uh, assurance of quality of our education, um, I um, uh, my opinion uh, that uh, such uh, developments uh, will be uh, very uh, productive, uh, both bachelor's, master's and PhD work uh, in the field of uh, education. Uh, thank you one more time. Uh, thank you, Maria Pavlina, uh, for uh, her workshop. Uh, um, I want uh, to emphasize uh, that uh, uh, at this workshop uh, was selected one top, but uh, the acceptance rate won, was uh, one quarter, uh, uh, 55 persons. Uh, this not about quantity, this about quality. Uh, thank you, Maria Pavlina, thank you, your team, uh, for uh, your you uh, big work. <laughs> Uh, so um, I, I think it is breakthrough also. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> so uh, we uh, have no time to make a uh, big breaks. Um, the uh, first uh, second pre-conference so, um, is ended, and let's start the next workshop. Uh, memorial workshop of uh, Ilya Oleksandrovich Teplitsky, uh, computer simulation in education. Uh, it's a traditional, it's a chance workshop uh, in our uh, memory. Uh, at this workshop uh, was, was selected um, three or four talks. Uh, I see uh, at uh, 
conference program. Oh yeah, uh, first talk, um, uh, Ukrainian higher education based on data-driven decision makers. Uh, and moreover, uh, we will have a uh, or leave or pre-recorded talk. Vyacheslav Oleksandrovich, uh, we have a leave talk, have we a leave talk or no? So, oh, good morning, my dear colleagues. Yeah, I'm very glad to send my greetings, my personal greetings to everybody personally and uh, the warmest greetings for uh, from our team uh, in persons of Katerina, Elena Shestapalova or, uh, and Victoria Gamanyuk. And uh, to present our report, I would like to share uh, my screen. So, is it possible? So, can you see my screen? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, so thank you. Uh, thank you very much. And now, in this case, uh, I can present our report. So, and uh, uh, as uh, conclusion, as conclusion, and maybe as continuing of the previous team and your report, uh, uh, I can say that uh, our report uh, is uh, wo uh, is aimed to Ukrainian higher education based on uh, data driven decision making, and this topic is uh, uh, very important uh, because uh, of geopolitical situation in Ukraine. And in this case, we, sorry, I need next slide, slide here. Yeah. And uh, the background of uh, our report uh, is uh, at first uh, the supporting uh, the quality of higher education of the citizens uh, as one of uh, one priorities of the cabinet of ministers of Ukraine uh, as a guarantee for future economical uh, stability of our uh, state yeah and uh, uh, from uh, the beginning of aggression of Russian Federation uh, in uh, 2022, uh, more than one uh, 151,000 uh, uh, people were enrolled to, to the higher educational institutions in bachelor programs, uh, and uh, many of the students uh, were in a fee for service. Uh, basis which uh, was about a person uh, more than in 2021 yeah uh, and uh, for example uh, during the military invention of ukraine by the russian army the number of major universities uh, in kiev in kharkiv mariupol mikolaev were shelled or destroyed and it's very tragic and uh, but anyway we have to continue our uh, educational process and it's a very big challenge for uh, everybody of us uh, as academic and universities and according to the study uh, higher education in eyes of students uh, which was held in august uh, or april and august uh, 2022 uh, more uh, uh, the most number uh, the most number 94 more than 90 uh, 94 percent of students were aimed to obtain higher education and it's a very uh, high level uh, in this case and only five percent of university students were affirmatively answered that education is meaningless uh, according to this report uh, and uh, one of the priorities in the conditions of uh, host alliance uh, is to preserve the quality of higher education in Ukraine, because it's the main stage of uh, sustainable uh, development of our uh, of our land as general. 
uh, and in response uh, to the need of Ukrainian university to re realize was realized online uh, format for learning in the uh, continuing of the invasion, all universities uh, had to, to choose this hybrid or fly flex learning. Uh, and uh, according to the uh, report of higher education through the ICE uh, students, uh, two online formats were involved uh, 33, more than 33% of students. Uh, oh, and uh, according to this, uh, uh, two online synchronous learning were involved uh, more than 55% of students. Uh, according to this, on, uh, two online uh, synchronous learning were involved more than 18% of students uh, and uh, 20, more than 23 of uh, percent were involved to, to hybrid online format. Uh, and uh, other uh, universities used other options uh, like uh, classrooms, educational process in uh, supplanted and uh, in general uh, they try to solve this problem in this case they would to do it uh, and all these criteria uh, request the crisis management and decision making based on the analysis of the quality of online teaching in work time uh, and everything indicates uh, that it's especially uh, important for students to uh, receive quality education. Uh, on the other hand, for teachers, there is a need to be flexible. Yeah, they have to do a flexible transformation of teaching to ensure the high level of education and uh, to access the quality of online teaching in work time. It's especially important to develop tools that are sensitive to feedback. At the same time, uh, this evaluation uh, tools should be uh, convenient for uh, processing large amount of feedbacks, data, and optimizing the learning process in general. And uh, in this case, we have to answer uh, two key point questions. Yeah, uh, our first part of uh, uh, in this case was uh, first research question are multiply types of testing methods sens uh, sensitive enough to uh, create the situation to access the quality of teaching to improve data driven decision making and the second question was uh, that the uh, that the second question is what are the ideal methods of teaching in the uh, conditions of military operation based on survey data and data driven decision making at universities uh, had uh, uh, some interesting stages of me measurement and uh, uh, to this topic uh, was aimed uh, some researches before, yeah, as you can see in this slide. Uh, uh, and sorry, next slide, sorry. Uh, and according to our decision, uh, to uh, we had data driven decision making in higher education in Ukraine mechanisms uh, of uh, uh, certain stages regulation. Uh, our uh, mechanism were processed by agency methodology of independent external on site evaluation of the quality of legal education in Ukraine. Uh, and uh, questionnaires were uh, implemented from the American educational system and uh, contained an assessment of the university's po uh, policies. Uh, and uh, this uh, a survey consists uh, of two parts. In the first section, response uh, that reacted uh, each statement in four points linked scale from one never true and five almost always true and indicated to what extent they agreed with according uh, 
uh, two improved blocks in Fissure. This you can see. Uh, and uh, section two containing general comments, the main strengths of many schools are, or the main weak, uh, weakness of my school are. And in this case, sorry, uh, methods we used, yeah, so we uh, proposed questionnaire, as I have said before, on uh, assessing uh, the quality of teaching subjects uh, in the military and distance learning involved, uh, proved by Unreal when uh, polluted in April 2022, because students didn't complete, uh, didn't complete it to uh, complexion. Uh, ignored the test or answered the same way on five point scale. Therefore, it was decided to modify the questionnaires to highlight the most important indicators for the university, uh, consisting of uh, 20 questions and uh, a five point scale. Three questions with answers or options and one open handed question. Uh, and according uh, to these uh, two aims of uh, our analysis, we plan to analyze our design to research on the quality of teaching in universities uh, by conditions we had. Uh, and uh, uh, response adults uh, answered this question according to the style of teaching. Uh, to the student uh, content and learning and learning resources and student support certificate and design programs. Uh, the survey of quality uh, of uh, teaching in universities in war conditions uh, contained 20 questions and uh, four statements about receiving benefits from uh, courses. And uh, these items were analyzed on the site item level because we wanted to have a specific look at the content of each item. A data analy analysis will be analyzed uh, during uh, our project and generally type of analysis uh, are conducted to uh, descriptive statistic. Yeah. Uh, to uh, style of teaching, students' uh, incentives, and the learning resources and students' support. Uh, and uh, in our survey, took part 680, uh, 688 students who participated in the research and answered uh, our questionnaire. Uh, and at the end, near the year, it uh, was about 81% uh, female and 28 male. And the uh, samples indicated students uh, without certification by specific end courses. And in this case, we had some conclusions. Yeah, our conclusions was that conclusions were that an important uh, condition for improving the methods of cell assessment and feedback to students regarding to the effectiveness of learning, of course, establishing and criterion uh, validity of each method. Uh, a creation of uh, the insurance reliability and valid feedback results is considered to be self-assessment by students in the mystery of the end-to-end uh, end -end complete uh, completeness. Uh, provided by the educational program. And so such self-evaluation sheets the focus of the creation of the effectiveness and educational program and individual descriptions for the students' general vision. Uh, and uh, to research question uh, was, uh, first question was, is multiply type of testing methods valid, reliable, or fair? And just the like report higher education through the eye of the students where students rate higher education very highly. In our study, the average for the questionnaire ranged from 3.72 for 0.72 average, yeah. Uh, and uh, according to our research questions, we had such 
the results. Uh, about uh, more than 4% or, 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 or of students had the majority uh, reported that uh, they had uh, quite a lot of benefits from the subject in general. Only 2.2% uh, of students reported that they uh, pursue the benefits in real, uh, in general, uh, and for benefits uh, relating to teaching and assessment, 65.2%, and the students reported these benefits uh, in 4.73%. And our results of the scale learning uh, resources and student support uh, were uh, related to the measurement showed that uh, high about 79 uh, and more students uh, were involved and they had these uh, learning resources. That was also the scale for the students uh, centered learning uh, and more than a half students were uh, especially uh, centered uh, to this learning. Uh, and uh, we had conclusions that considering the results of the study should analyze the concert uh, of the survey in the conditions on hostilities recommending changes in the behavior of a teacher, of course, uh, and as the relation of the person boundaries. Uh, and uh, the other conclusion was uh, it is uh, advisable to include in the concert of the cautionaries only those requirements uh, that uh, will uh, full uh, fulfillment of which is likely to be problematic. The questionnaires should be contain, contain general information about the language of teaching uh, of the fields, the percentage of attendance at classes in the academic uh, fields or disciplines, and the number of points based on the results of the current program control. Uh, and our uh, next, uh, our second research question, what uh, was what was the ways of anti-crisis digital transformation of teaching at the university in the conduction of the hostelites based on decision making based uh, on survey data. The second uh, modification of the questionnaire gave uh, uh, a 96 text uh, completion rate with uh, completion tide of 20, 20, uh, 12, 23 minutes, and it was rather high uh, rate. And uh, to reach this question, uh, we uh, have to answer the next question for future uh, research based on the data, we prospectively assume that with the, it helped to the survey, it is likely to, to, to form a rating for the, uh, for the field's discipline, to form a component of the uh, teacher rating, to identify uh, empirically the inf factor indicators of students, and to form the promotion areas for digital transformation transformation of teaching process. Uh, and uh, it's in general, it's only the first stage that maybe can change uh, the rates of studying uh, the special submission and uh, maybe uh, change uh, something, uh, change uh, attitudes of teachers and students uh, to take part or to be involved to, to uh, teaching process. So, in this case, my dear colleagues, thank you very much for your attention. And uh, if you have got any questions, I would likely answer them. Uh, many thank you, Vyacheslav Alexandrovich. Uh, this presentation we have in, in um, both, uh, uh, both uh, real and virtual. Uh, at the conference program, uh, you can see also video presentation. Um, I don't mistake, it was recorded by uh, Katerina Mikolaevna Bonda. Uh, so, uh, your questions?
so and as no, I no questions. <laughs> no problems. Was it very difficult or was it very easy? And uh, personally, I would like to add that uh, this topic is very interesting because uh, uh, analyzing by analysis of uh, these questions uh, between uh, more uh, between about 600 students, we can uh, see this dynamic and uh, changes in their involving uh, to the uh, studying process. Yeah, and uh, sometimes it's very important for the teacher uh, teachers to um, price. Uh, uh, for example, personal abilities to involve uh, the students to educational process. And for example, can I be a leader uh, anymore? And can I lead my students uh, uh, despite of these uh, geopolitical problems uh, to educational process? Uh, thank you, Vyacheslav okay. Alexandrovich. Uh, no, uh, one more question, uh, no, uh, disputable questions. Um, your research is entitled as a Ukrainian high education, uh, but uh, most of research results uh, based uh, on the survey uh, for, uh, for students of Kriverik State Pedagogical Vision. University. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Yes. Uh, uh, Kriverik State Pedagogical University uh, last month uh, was uh, assessed um, as um, <laughs> uh, by the National Agency for Quality Assurance. Uh, and uh, according uh, to decision of National Agency, uh, the master programs of our university are um, very bad quality. Uh, it's a delight um, accreditation. Uh, uh, it means that uh, uh, our programs uh, was uh, improperly uh, designed, constructed, and um, realized. Uh, so, uh, yesterday, uh, during a workshop on digital transformation of education, uh, we have some debates with uh, the member uh, of board, uh, di board directors of a uh, national agency uh, about uh, these programs. Uh, and uh, he uh, mm, no, mm, proposed some recommendations uh, for us. Uh, the first recommendations uh, in uh, our field of education, uh, um, uh, uh, it seems to be uh, uh, 014 secondary education, uh, no, teacher, teacher preparation with subject specialization. Um, in Ukraine, uh, we have no uh, uh, state standard uh, for uh, this um, uh, speciality. And uh, I don't uh, think that the standards will appear the next year or the uh, next and the next year. Uh, so the recommendation uh, was uh, so uh, you should to see uh, the foreign programs and uh, especially in uh, Germany, uh, Great Britain, no Europe, Europe programs uh, for teacher training with subject specialization. Uh, and in case uh, if you uh, can propose uh, a, a good uh, foreign experience uh, for accreditations. Uh, programs and um, uh, ENCA uh, and uh, ZEVA and other agencies. Uh, so the national agency uh, taking part uh, this experience uh, during the uh, next circle of accreditation. Uh, so uh, at the moment, uh, one uh, of the uh, um, uh, authors uh, of your uh, presentations, uh, Katerina Mikolaevna Shostopala, uh, is in Germany. Uh, 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 so um, our uh, wish, 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 propose, uh, uh, maybe, uh, to uh, try to ensure uh, 
that uh, the teacher preparation with the subject specialization in uh, our desired field set is a uh, language education, language education for the first of all, uh, mathematics education uh, and computer science education, um, uh, how uh, Germany experience uh, can be uh, used by us to improve our educational programs. Thank you. <laughs> uh, so, uh, if you can, was, uh, uh, I'll try. I'll try. Yes. Yeah, so uh, personally, uh, for me, I would like to say that, uh, for example, our ministry or uh, our uh, agency of uh, insurance or quality insurance in education, they don't uh, see. They see only the final aim of our education. Yeah, and sometimes this aim is uh, similar to uh, as they are same to uh, aims to, of uh, international education aims. Uh, uh, in Germany and so on. And so, for example, uh, taking place, uh, taking part uh, Katerina in uh, programs so will uh, give our opportunity to maybe change something in our tools uh, to uh, achieve best results. And uh, maybe uh, Katerina is more responsible in these cases uh, in part of our decision and maybe uh, our next step is uh, to um, compare Re really to compare uh, the stages of uh, teachers preparation yeah and maybe uh, finding tools uh, to change and uh, get better uh, in prepare in uh, teachers preparation for future uh, many thanks, Vyacheslav Alexandrovich. It's a uh, critical problem uh, for our university and uh, uh, all higher education in Ukraine yeah, uh, at this time. Uh, many thanks. Uh, uh, have you any questions, additional questions? It's a very interesting report uh, for all of us. Okay, and uh, in this case, I would, uh, I, I will hope that maybe after our victory, we could, uh, we will, uh, we will develop uh, Ukrainian strategy in teacher, uh, teachers' preparation and for Europe strategy. and the US. <laughs> yeah, and our strategy will be the best. <laughs> <laughs> many so, thanks, thanks, Vyacheslav thanks. Alexandrovich. Uh, many thanks, my dear colleagues. Uh, so, uh, uh, we hear uh, the song of sirens, uh, not, uh, not Odyssey type, uh, uh, but uh, quite Homeric. Um, uh, the next uh, talk uh, in our uh, workshop program uh, is uh, Nadia Pavlovna Kozachenko from Kriverik State Pedagogical University, uh, modeling of AGM style doxetics uh, operation in three valued settings. Uh, Andrei Mikolaevich, let's start. I cannot uh, start a presentation because uh, because I start to... my presentation by myself. <laughs> Is it possible? <laughs> One more leaf presentation. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Thank you. Nadia Pavlovna, uh, your talk, uh, Andrei Mikolaevich present presents. Mm, for what? <laughs> I have my own presentation. Let's start. <laughs> can I start? Yes, you can. <laughs> Thank you. <Please. laughs> Do you see my presentation on the screen? Yes, uh, we can see. <laughs> thank you, thank you, thank you. Let's start really. I think it will be interesting. 
maybe not so interesting like <laughs> uh, previous uh, presentation because it is just about pure logic. So really, I'm Nadia Kazachenko. I'm a teacher of logic uh, from Kriverik State Pedagogical University, and my research area is logic and its application. So I always deal with model which can have different levels of formality. The standard approach uh, to teaching modeling and its application is moving between two levels, theoretical and empirical. Indeed, the model emerges as an idealization of practical experience. The third approach is the gradually refinement of the model based on practice. But often, we adjust the practical implementation to the requirements of the model. So quite often we believe that the theoretical structure is stronger, more important than the nuances of practical implementation. But quite often, it is difficult to distinguish between the error of the empirical process and the real inconsistency of the process with the model. But empirical refinements are not the only way to improve the model. The theory really has its own patterns and allows us to refine itself. But in addition, the theory can be improved and even checked by comparing it with other theories. It can be done at, by at least two ways. The first way, by harmonizing it with another theory which has a confirmed status. And the second way, by considering the theory within the framework of a more formal system which had the proven status. So we want to show how it works. We will deal, uh, we will deal with so-called belief revision belief revision, the general framework for modeling of reasoning. The basic ideas described in this approach are constantly used in fields of databases, functioning, support, and updating software products and data. Uh, AGM, Elcheron, Garden Force, and Markinson, named after its foundators. Um, AGM is one of more formal parts of belief revision. A gem is a system of principles for describing all belief changes. It is often seen as a branch of epistemic or doxastic logic, logic of knowledge of logic of beliefs. A gem is an attention to approach to modeling of real reasoning. Um, there are presented general concepts of belief changes and rational agents reasoning in AGM. Also, AGM, def AGM defines uh, main cognitive actions. We will consider only two of them, of con cognitive actions, expansion and contraction. They are considered the basic operations. The goal of our research, we consider the semi-formal epistemic system of AGM as general guidelines for cognitive action defining. We formulate the basic principles of interpretation of AGM cognitive action as model operators of three valued, lo valued logic in a strong logic. We check obtained operators properties and how we can express the postulates of AGM cognitive operations in three valued logic to obtain theorems. And according to the received interpretation, we review the minimality criterion for its compliance with the agent, postulant, and, and other, other many useful things. So let's start. One of the founders of AGM, Peter Gerdenfors, formulated the system of main components of epistemic theory. There are epistemic states, epistemic attitudes, epistemic inputs and criteria of rationality. And we can try to model it into three valid logic. Every epistemic theory is based on some basic concepts. First of them is belief. A gem is a sentential system. It considers every belief a sentence. Thus, we can use proposition of logical language to represent belief. Then we will use a belief set. A gem uses a set theoretical notation for describing the relation between belief and belief set. So belief belongs to the belief set if the agent believes in it. Belief set is considered closer to the logical consequence. So we can put A derivable, derivable from K 
if and only if A belongs to K. Then we have three statuses of belief. Belief A is accepted if and only if A belongs to K. So belief or sentence proposition A is rejected from belief sets K if and only if uh, uh, the corresponding sentence A not belongs to K. Also, the status of A is indetermined. So, it was main frames which we should implement in some formal system. We chose the complete logic L3 to translate main AGM principles. It is an ordinary three-valued logic developed by Lukasevich. In our main article, we explain the reasons that allow us to use this logic. Um, um, so, we leave the standard Lukasevich definition of logical connectives, conjunction, disjunction, implication, and negation. In our presentation, we consider only tables for cognitive operators. Um, as we can see, we will we use a simple notation for doxastic or non-doxastic expression. Plus means doxastic operator of expansion. Div means doxastic operator of contraction. So we can form uh, different expressions like logical expression without doxastic operators, non-doxastic expression, and doxastic expression with this operator. So. We are based on belief statuses and their relation to cognitive action described by Herdenfors. This allows us to also consider the idea of success in performing a cognitive action. A cognitive operator must return true if it changes the belief status according to Herdenfors requirements. So we obtained a table definition, tabular definition for operator of expansion plus P, like unary model operator of three-valued logic. Uh, so we perform similar actions to obtain the tabular definition to the contraction operator. And this is interesting. With contraction operator D, we can formulate the law of the excluded force, which exhaustively describes the set of possible statuses of a sentence with respect to the agent's belief set. We can prove the corresponding theorem in L3 using a truth table. Thus, it looks like we have chosen the correct interpretation of the operators. Moreover, it is not worse that the doxastic operators introduced in this way demonstrate significantly different properties. Plus A behaves like a normal model operator and satisfies the corresponding properties. This operator also allows iteration and can be applied to the doxastic formula. So we can successfully use expressions like plus plus A and other. In turn, the operator diff contraction operator applied to doxastic formulas returns a contradictory formula. Both expansion and contraction deal with three values, true, indetermined, and false, and map them on two values, true and false. Thus, contraction applied to the formula with only T, O, and F values without indetermined values gives us only false. And we can describe all statuses of a proposition using our notation for doxastic action. A is exactly true, exactly false, not defined, is not true, not defined or false. And uh, I think it is the main part of our work. So, using the obtained notation, we translated the postulates of AGM for cognitive action into the postulates of doxastic unary operators within the framework of three valued logic. These this, uh, postulates describe a family of expansion operators. Factually, with the help of the postulate of expansion, the operator of expansion can be axiomatically defined. That is, if the doxastic operator satisfying the postulates of expansion, then it is equivalent to the operator expansion of AGM. 
we put this expansion as follows. The upper expression, upper expression is the AGM postulate. The lower expression is its representation in logic L3. To formulate the corresponding expressions, we relied on the properties of doxastic operators defined above and on the behavior of truth values. Using truth tables, it is easy to show that all of them are theorems in L3. For contraction. Indeed, the expansion operator behaves like a normal operator and doesn't cause any inconvenience being translated into three-valued logic. Moreover, all its properties were quite predictable. In turn, the contraction operator behaves differently. Thus, additional formalization are required to express the AGM postulates of contraction. Building a contraction operator in, is considered to be successful if it satisfies the postulates of contraction AGM. But expressing these postulates using our operator was not so easy. To get L3 tautologies, we had to strengthen the form, formulas by expansion operator. But these changes never went against the essence of the postulate. Uh, I want to finish. So, we can obtain many interesting properties with this interpretation. Some of them are unexpected, but others even allow us to refine the properties of doxastic operations. Thus, we can say that our doxastic operators satisfy the basic property of uh, cognitive actions presented in Gerdenforce postulates. Moreover, we can express some additional properties of AGM cognitive actions by tautologies of L3. This suggests that the way of interpretation we have chosen is quite acceptable. It allows us to look at the properties of cognitive actions from the other side. At the same time, the L3 logic itself doesn't allow us to go beyond the derivability and tautologies of this logic which forces us to refine the general properties of operators based on truth values. So really we work with model and other non-classical logics in the master's classes. We are dealing with formal system and their properties. Most systems describe the process of modeling reasoning at a very high level of idealization. And it is quite difficult for master's students to translate them into practical activity. To be honest, most of the master's students don't perceive topics on model of or, or multi-valued logic as relevant to practice. The corresponding tasks are rather perceived as interesting but purely formal tasks. On the other hand, belief revision is perceived in a completely different way since it is only partially formalized. It can be said to be a set of guidelines that everyday reasoning must follow to be considerational. Uh, such a semi-formal approach leads to the fact that system based on belief revision are more closely related to practice but do not have the proven characteristic of formal systems. Therefore, they are easy to implement, easy to implement, but there is no guarantee that their requirements are consistent or complete. So it is not enough to specify some semi-formal system only based on practice. They should be coordinated with formal schemes of a higher level. Thank you. Uh, thank you for your presentations. Uh, it seems to be uh, um, uh, a lot of questions to your talk. I'm not sure, but I um. can continue. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, it really it really made me upset because i have many material and uh, little little uh, not enough time so, sorry uh, so uh, it's uh, not about pure logic it's not a uh, clear logic as you concluded uh, but uh, it's a uh, uh, dirty practice education uh, etc uh, multi logics it's uh, 
very useful, uh, especially for um, uh, not not only classical cognitive sciences. Um, uh, it's uh, uh, maybe for psychology, uh, for economy, uh, uh, all uh, our areas uh, when the uh, people uh, can make some decision and move some system, social, economic, uh, in uh, some way. Uh, the best example of belief revision uh, is our Ukrainian president. Uh, his revision uh, changes according uh, the changes situation, uh, us and uh, our country. Uh, so uh, I uh, would like to. Um, uh, present uh, your uh, talk um, as a, a really, uh, really practice of uh, education. Um, uh, it seems to be a good idea uh, to um, uh, include uh, uh, the questions of multivariate logging uh, in um, all uh, classical uh, philosophy, logic courses for all students, uh, not only um, for yes, uh, now it is a selective course. Uh, so, um, uh, as a, a chair of uh, philosophy, uh, what uh, level of selection your course uh, among the students? Uh, it's at present. How not much? So much not so much. Not so much. Not so much because we had. Uh, we had a limit of students to form one, the, the, the whole the whole class of students. And uh, last year, we had not enough students to form the whole class. Uh, we had in these classes last year. Uh, so maybe uh, uh, a good idea to be uh, to join uh, the we will uh, have we will have uh, it next year a, a force of uh, at least uh, of Krivo Rock universities uh, for the best classes from other universities. Uh, I see uh, here Andrei Mikolai Struk. Uh, he uh, represent uh, the uh, Department of Software. Uh, um, Software engineering and uh, modeling uh, of Krivorich uh, National University, uh, and uh, I can propose uh, so ideas uh, to our uh, state university of economics and technology. Uh, no, it uh, seems to be useful uh, such integration uh, inter universities inter calls uh, the best from us to all. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Thank you for your offer. Uh, so, uh, which questions uh, to be uh, to uh, Nadia Pavlovna? Uh, all excited. Excited uh, by your talk, um, uh, it seems to be uh, some questions. My specific uh, sphere, uh, really. Uh, it needs to be more explained. Uh, uh, when uh, our decisions uh, are uh, modeled uh, by uh, uh, some some uh, some small kind of mass, uh, so our decisions uh, which uh, be uh, approved uh, according to the uh, emotional decisions, uh, some limited uh, information decisions, uh, etc. Uh, uh, really, uh, data driven approach uh, with appropriate uh, modeling. It's a future for successful decision, uh, both in our education uh, and uh, our maybe government, <laughs> maybe Ukraine and uh, world. Uh, so, um, 
uh, time is go. So, uh, oh, uh, the next talk, um, the next talk uh, uh, to be represented by uh, Olena uh, Yegenia Pietikop, uh, the recognition of speech defects using convolutional neural networks. Uh, uh, Olena Evgenievna, uh, uh, Andriy Mikolaevich, uh, are you ready to present uh, this video talk? Oh, yes, thank you. Let's start. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Uh, my name is Elena. I am docent at the Department of Computer Science, uh, Brezovsky State Technical University, Mariupol, Dnipro, Ukraine. I'm glad to take part in this conference. To this with my colleague Solha Peronina, they offer a report on topic the recognition of speech defects using convolution neural networks. Uh, the, the development of speech in the main skills that allows a person to community uh, in society, the developmental stage of human speech begins in early childhood. Uh, uh, speech defects can use the development of complex in a person. Therefore, it's very important to implement them in early age. Uh, currently, there is no single uh, classification on speech uh, distorts. In this case, uh, it is possible to perform a general division of speech distorts uh, into classes. And uh, the following defects are more common. Dyslexia, dyslalia, rhinosalia, dysphonia, stuttering. Uh, loss of speech is one of the most complex um, uh, manifestations of speech uh, disorders. The, uh, this uh, violets uh, can have several uh, variants: uh, alusia, aphasia, alalia, alogia. The use uh, uh, of modern information technologies uh, names the possibility of intelligence data processing will allow us to recognize and determine the type of speech defects. Uh, the analysis, the publication of various authors, examples you will see on this slide. Uh, to date, uh, there are many works on speech recognition uh, for its uh, further uh, descriptions. The questions of speech recognition for detecting defects uh, suggests uh, a um, slightly different mechanism. Uh, most often, researchers uh, use neural networks. Convolution uh, network, uh, neural networks are uh, especially relevant. Uh, however, uh, most of the uh, studies are not focused on the Ukrainian language, so remote uh, solutions are not uh, suitable uh, for this spectacle of uh, the Ukrainian language and ch uh, children. It was decided to use convolution net net networks uh, to recognize children's voice uh, messages, then testing them for speech uh, deviations. Uh, this is this object uh, to study in uh, identifying speech uh, deviations. Uh, to describe uh, the mm, relation on the speech of children, a mathematical model was uh, developed. Um, its description in show on this slide, more details can be found uh, in the publication. Uh, all video materials were taken the speech uh, distorts of children who have not yet uh, started working with speech therapists. Each video is approximately 10 seconds long. Uh, uh, the input data for the model are our audio signals that were selected and processed from uh, those found in the public domain. 
with labels uh, for the type of speech defects uh, establishment by the speech uh, therapist. The signals uh, of the video materials are processing and cut into uh, phrases and words. The splitting of the speech audio files is done with the help of uh, Python libraries. Uh, that allows you to both speak uh, the replicas uh, into words and build uh, spectrograms for further analysis. These audio signals are then converted into a spectrogram. A spectrogram is a visual representation of the spectrum at the future uh, of a signal and how it changes at the time. Uh, uh, the spectrograms data they filled uh, to the neural network as a training sample. CNN was built uh, to detect speech defects. Its graphic representation is shown in figure uh, one. The structure consists of uh, uh, 16 layers. The last layer is activation layers. The softmax activation function was installed for it. The detailed description in this uh, article. The algorithm of general data processing and stage of working this model for detecting speech defects uh, cons um, consists of several stages. The general principle of def um, defect handling is shown in figure two. After training the CNN, uh, they was tested and data taken this and the result speech disorders. Uh, the entry data sample was uh, divided according uh, to the principle of uh, 70 to 30. The model was trained on a uh, test set made uh, independently from video and audio files uh, available in the public domain. After training, a data set not uh, previously used in training was taken and testing was carried out. A total of uh, 32 experiments were um, conducted. Uh, 18 experiments were run for each type of speech uh, disorder. The minimum accuracy was 0 to 72 and the maximum was uh, uh, 0 0.81. The division into speech disorders is uh, shown in figure three. The chart in the figure three shows data for each uh, type of speech um, impairment, um, means value from uh, eight experiments. Uh, during the experiment, um, audio recording is uh, children um, with speech um, in payments, they are collected for each classes. The age of children in the audio files range from 50 to uh, 14 years old. To analyze the uh, satisfactory training of the train uh, CNN model, each class was uh, carried out on a test set. The number of audio tracking is uh, different. The result of the experiments is presented in table. In table, is the result of experiments. It was um, concluded uh, that the successful identification of trained classes is 77-79 percent. This is a correct result and allows you to accurately determine uh, the like uh, variance in the child to speak. Um, conclusions. Classes of uh, uh, speech there primarily in decided. On the basis in this data, a general mathematical model of speech interplayment in children was built. The paper presents the results of the analysis of studies on the use of uh, CNN for the recognition of sound information. The analysis shows that uh, convolution neural networks models can be successfully used to classify speech defects, but the results uh, that are available today have not been applied to speak in Ukraine. 
Therefore, uh, an architecture model and structure of the CNN for speed detect uh, defect uh, cognition was developed. Experiments have been um, conducted that have shown a successful def deficient of classes of uh, defects, dyslalia, uh, stuttering, dysphonia, and dyslalia is 77 and 79%. Uh, uh, the next step will be to extend to cover a wide range of speech difference and devolution. Uh, thank you for your attention. Uh, thank you for your presentation, uh, dear colleagues. Uh, any questions uh, uh, to Olena Evgenievna? I think definitely uh, we, 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 we must have question uh, to such presentation. Uh, so uh, I try to start. Uh, uh, Olena Evgenievna, uh, um, I apologize. Uh, at uh, your presentation, uh, I um, uh, no, uh, too small, uh, um, too small the figure uh, with uh, your uh, model. Uh, could you uh, characterize uh, your network? Uh, the number of layers, uh, the number uh, of inputs, no, uh, and uh, even a network architecture uh, which use it in uh, your research the input data the spectrogram uh, oh uh, yes the, the, uh, this yeah. slide is is very uh, very small i, I can see uh, yes the... uh, uh, but uh, uh, but the uh, sixth in, uh, stage uh, don't have on this slide these uh, details uh, in uh, the articles. Uh, the um, first uh, stage this is the input. Uh, the next uh, stage this is the uh, levels of the CNN. The function activation is ReLU. Uh, the uh, first uh, 16 uh, level, um, the uh, last uh, stage, the function activation, the uh, soft max. Uh, no, um, ah, no, soft max uh, classic uh, to make uh, for decisions uh, about yes. you. Uh, yes, uh, it's, uh, it's a completely uh, appropriate architecture. Uh, what about uh, the uh, raw data digitalizations? Uh, what do you use to uh, make your recordings? Uh, are you uh, try to uh, make some um, um, uh, sound uh, corrections, uh, etc. Uh, what uh, the length um, in seconds, uh, for example, uh, of your typical recordings which you use it to train your network? Uh, they use the recording for 10, 10 minutes. Mm, 10. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. No, 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 no. The so, so. Uh, diff different uh, so. one moment um different uh, uh, begins uh, for 10 seconds um, uh, 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 but your network input is fixed uh, so the uh, length of your no, uh, no. audio one, one uh, should be should be one, fixed. Uh, yeah. uh, input data we cut uh, cut for seconds, um, but. Uh, 
Uh, oh, you, you use a thing that we know, uh, which applied to uh, all recording. Uh, thank you. Uh, the next question. Uh, who was uh, expert uh, which labeled your data? Uh, who recognized uh, the uh, uh, difference uh, type of... Um, um, uh, here, no, not here in partners. Um, uh, 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 different times of not not this this uh, dyslexia. Disappointed. Oh yeah, I, I apologize. Uh, um, different types um, of your uh, output. Uh, do you uh, uh, use uh, some uh, labeling uh, by uh, themselves, uh, or use some uh, expert opinion, uh, the specials in uh, corrective uh, pedagogy? Uh, etc. Uh, thank you for questions. Um, uh, now this uh, work is only uh, researches because uh, we have, um, we um, have only uh, audio files from uh, free domains, uh, we have uh, the label of the speech therapist, uh, but. Uh, no, because the one uh, and uh, now um, I don't uh, have the uh, really speech uh, therapist, but uh, uh, the future we uh, no, research in really speech therapist. But no, uh, now we haven't uh, this uh, testing for really children. No. Uh, uh, now you in Dnipro, but Krivirich uh, is um, uh, near Dnipro. Uh, in at Krivirich no. State Pedagogical University, uh, we have prepared the specialists in uh, uh, correctional uh, pedagogy. Uh, so um, uh, uh, we can start uh, a fruitful cooperation in this regard. Thank you for your. Uh, proposition uh, we uh, <laughs> when uh, we return to ukraine uh, me we okay. definitely work and work together uh, so, uh, in uh, country i want uh, uh, yeah really want to return for ukraine uh, just to future до нашої рідної країни і сподіваюсь і до вашого рідного Маріуполя. Наша Україна на стім, тому що повернемося в Україну, куди буде можливо. Вибачте. Лише так. Щиро дякуємо вам і вашій команді, що продовжуєте працювати у такі, у такі часи і за таких обставин. Робота? Дякую. Uh, many thanks for your work. Uh, any other question to Олена Євгенівна? Надія Павлівна, your question. And we have, we have a question in chat, I think. Um, thank you. Thank you for interesting research. And as I understand, you are on the stage of gathering of empirical data now. And could you tell me about your method for model training? Uh, uh. Training is the traditional method. They take the uh, all data uh, divided uh, 70 uh, to 30 persons and seeing uh, and learning on this data, and uh, then uh, the testing on the data of uh, certain persons. 
of uh, traditional model for C net network CNN for by uh, Python library. Thank you. Uh, so, so classical TensorFlow and um, Keras yes. uh, are used. Uh, no, yes. it's really a modern classic. Yes. <laughs> yes. Well. Uh, thank you, Olena Evgenia. Thank you, Nadia Pavlina, for your questions. Uh, any thank other you questions? Question. Uh, uh, it seems to be no question uh, in the chat, uh, no in leave. Uh, so uh, it's a uh, really uh, quite conclusion for our workshop uh, on computer simulation in education. Uh, thank you all workshop participants. Uh, the next year uh, we will try to return with 11 workshop. Uh, the next year will be and workshop to be. Um, uh, so uh, thank you, uh, Andrew Mikolaevich, uh, as a um, long year uh, workshop chair. Uh, and uh, it seems to be uh, we need uh, to um, go at last at the conference, all pre-conference workshop are uh, concluded and uh, we have a good conference program. Uh, according to the um, technical issues, uh, the talk of uh, Alexander Vasilyevich Konevets and uh, his team uh, will be moved uh, something um, low, uh, no, uh, at last uh, 40 minutes. Uh, we're waiting for the uh, Anton Kelemesh. Uh, so uh, we start uh, almost just in time uh, with the uh, next talk, uh, Smart Education in the Prospective Teacher Training. Um, the reporter should be Natalia Dmitrenko. We have a video talk. Uh, during this talk, I uh, made, uh, will make uh, according um, changes in the conference program. Uh, so, uh, Andrew Mikolaevich, you uh, have the possibility uh, to start uh, this video presentation. Uh, Andrew Mikolaevich. Uh... Oh, yeah, thank you. Uh, no, no, this presentation. Uh, next presentation, please. Smart education Thanks. in the prospective teacher great. training. Mm -hmm. Yes. Dear colleagues, it's a great pleasure to have an opportunity to join and spend fruitful time with you at the conference of cloud and immersed technologies in education. I am Natalia Dmitrenko, the correspondent author of the article, and on behalf of my co-authors, Oksana Voloshina, Svetlana Kizim, Katerina Mnishenko, Svetlana Nagarnyak, let me present the results of our study, which is devoted to the problem of smart education in the prospective teachers' training. Wide implementation of information and communication technologies and digitalization of all fields of social life is considered in the majority of countries of the world as one of the strategic tasks of the progressive development. The education system needed the transformation of educational technologies that are able to interact and exchange of experience of online and online modes. The transformation led to the implementation of smart education in the system of training students. The concept of smart in the context of education is associated with the emergence of such technologies as smart boards, smart screens, and access to the internet from anywhere. Each of these technologies allows to organize the process of content development and is updating in a new way. The purpose of the article is the theoretical substantiation and practical implementation of the elements of smart complexes in the educational process of the disciplines of the pedagogical cycle by students in the conditions of COVID-19 pandemic and martial law in Ukraine. 
The hypothesis of the study is that the creating and using the smart complexes in the pedagogical discipline environment will improve the students' level of smart technology using skills and intensifying the educational process. The analysis of scientific works on the research problem showed a great interest of scholars to the main aspects of smart education. Among them, the use of current information of the curriculum for solving educational problems, organization of independent cognitive research and project activities of students, implementation of the teaching approaches in a multi-aspect educational process environment, interaction of students with the professional community, flexible educational trajectories, individualization of education, multifaceted educational activity. The main elements of the system are a smart student, a smart pedagogy, and a smart environment. When considering the structure of smart education, most scholars focus on the special position of smart technologies in this system. Smart technologies, computer programs, online resources, learning games and game situations, simulations, intelligent educational applications, virtual reality, MOOCs, interactive interfaces, etc., are adaptive, flexible technologies that contribute to organization of personalized training in accordance with the personal differences of students. Such technologies respond to the interest and individual characteristics of students. Smart complexes make it possible to implement the main trends of the smart education concept. A smart complex is an information educational system which is designed to optimize the learning process using digital technologies as well as the automation of feedback process, management with the framework of educational process for interaction of participants in the educational process, and enriching students' personal experience by searching and processing educational content on the internet. In the system of education, with the increase of online services and the possibility of obtaining knowledge uh, remotely, such systems as site management systems, content management systems are rapidly developed for improving and providing smart complexes in the educational process. Among them, learning management system, course management system, learning content management system, managed learning environment, learning support system, learning platform virtual learning environments. The main advantages of smart complexes are immediate response to external changes, openness, expansion due to the integration of new functionality, ease access to educational material, mobility, ensuring capability uh, between software for different operating systems, lack of dependence on time and place, continuous updating of the content, the possibility of self-assessment evaluation of the knowledge of students. In order to implement smart um, complexes in the educational process, we determine the facilities of smart complex for students and for teachers in the process of studying the disciplines of the pedagogical cycle using LMS, learning management systems, which are presented on slides seven and eight. Based on the analysis of scientific works, criteria of the smart complex and the educational process were singled out. Among them, automation, the possibility of creating automated process to reduce the number of routine operations during assessment, training, and achievement of educational goals. Sequencing, the possibility of ensuring the consistent progression of the student competencies defined uh, in the final goals in a fixed or non-fixed unit of time. Assessment, the possibility of applying a number of criteria, diagnostic and formative assessment on the basis of greater immediacy and continuity. Data collection in real time, the ability to collect, calculate, evaluate data from an array of resources using defined methods in real or approximately real time. Self-organization, the ability of the system to use the results for the continuous formation of feedback in the educational process. The main principles of the functioning of smart complexes include ensuring capability between the software of different operating system, mobility, continuity, and free access to any information, autonomy of the teacher and student, definition and application of various motivational models, assessment of changes and competence, 
change of education due to the individual capabilities and interests of the student. Therefore, in the process of designing and creating the smart complex, it is important that the presented criteria and principles are interdependent that can adapt the smart complex to the requirements of prospective teachers professional activity. In order to obtain experimental data in the process of researching the issue of designing and creating smart complexes based on distance learning systems, a pedagogical experiment took place in the professional training of future teachers. In the process of studying the disciplines of pedagogical cycle for students of the speciality professional education, digital technologies at Vinica Mikhail Katubinsky State Pedagogical University, a questionnaire was conducted regarding the organization of distance learning by students using smart complexes while studying the disciplines of pedagogical cycle. There were 18 respondents. The participants were informed about the purpose and the structure of the study and assured the students' names would not be used in the study result reports. The participation in the study was voluntary and the survey results are presented on slide 11, 12, and 13. In general, the research showed that implementation of smart education was able to ensure a high level of education which met the goals and objectives of distance learning and the conditions of the COVID-19 pandemic and martial law in Ukraine. Smart complexes made it possible to introduce the main trains of smart education into the educational process. The survey results showed that the smart education is being actively implemented at Vinica Mikhail Kosubensky State Pedagogical University. The analysis of the SEVI results showed that the platforms and services allowed future teachers to create smart complexes of educational disciplines. The smart complex of the educational discipline uh, acted as an individual personalized online program environment on the website portal or e-platform, which allowed the teacher to accumulate his personal educational digital resources linked and provided access to them and also observed the current results of students in real time. As the SEVI result showed, future teachers used platforms and services in combination, strengthening the interactive component of the smart complex of pedagogical disciplines. In the smart complex environment, the teacher uh, can present educational content, communicate with participants in the educational process, uh, visualize data, assign tasks individually for separate groups of the entire class at once, and instantly receive results after students' complex tasks, uh, save and view performance statistics. The results of the study made it possible to highlight advantages of the use of smart technologies in the educational process, which showed on the slide 14, that can allow intensifying the process of using these technologies. The respondents also noted a number of advantages of smart technologies that create a certain basement for their further intensive use. Among them, we can highlight time saving, visibility, and efficiency of use in distance learning conditions. Further research should be concentrated on the study of the methodology of the organization of smart training in distance uh, and didactic principles of um, creation of smart complexes, the students' activation in the development of electronic educational content of pedagogical disciplines. And for further development students' smart technology skills, it can be recommended to apply some additional courses into the educational process of future teachers that could allow to eliminate and minimize the identified shortcomings and to increase the level of students' readiness for the use of smart technologies. So thank you for your time and attention. Hello to everybody.
these are in, <clears throat> are invite to discussion. Do you have any question, colleague? We don't have a questions. Andrei Mikolaevich, maybe uh, let's go. In the chat, uh, we have uh, uh... Uh, Well, uh, thank you very much. I start uh, mm previous um, presentation, ne next presentation. Hello to everybody, dear chairman and participants of the conference. My name is Anton Filimesh, and I would like to bring your attention the report on using a mobile application to teach students to measure with a micrometer during remote laboratory work. Together with me, this research was conducted by Alexander Penivez, Irina Penivez, Tatiana Horda, and Alexander Horbenko. <clears throat> the purpose of this study is to present our own experience of developing and using in the educational process, a mobile application for teaching micrometer measurements during the relevant remote uh, laboratory work in the disciplines interchangeability, standardization, and technical measurements and physics by students in agroengineering and industrial engineering. <clears throat> the object of research is the educational information program measuring parts with a micrometer for conducting appropriate laboratory work during distance learning of students of technical specialities. The subject of research is the process of development and implementation of this educational program in the educational process of higher educational institution. To achieve the goal, it is necessary to solve the following tasks. To carry, <clears throat> to carry out a theoretical review of literature sources related to the issue of performing laboratory work remotely, including through educational information programs. To develop a micrometer model in CAD system, to develop a mobile application in the Unity game engine, to check the operability of the information and educational program measuring parts with the micrometer, <clears throat> and to analyze the results of students' success after studying this topic using the mobile application. <laughs> the analysis of literature so uh, can you pause this presentation? The mobile application are uh, thank you. Uh, your window uh, was um, our helm at this presentation. Uh, so uh, you can uh, resume it. Thank you. Hello to everybody, dear chairman and participants of the conference. My name is Anton Filimesh, and I would like to bring your attention the report on using a mobile application to teach students to measure with a micrometer during remote laboratory work. Together with me, this research was conducted by Alexander Penivez, 
Ірина Канівець, Тетяна Горда і Олександр Горбенко. The purpose of this study is to present our own experience of developing and using in the educational process a mobile application for teaching micrometer measurements during the relevant remote laboratory work in the disciplines interchangeability, standardization, and technical measurements and physics by students measuring in agroengineering and industrial engineering. <clears throat> The object of research is the educational information program measuring parts with a micrometer for conducting appropriate laboratory work during distance learning of students of technical specialities. The subject of research is the process of development and implementation of this educational program in the educational process of higher educational institutions. To achieve the goal, it is necessary to solve the following tasks. To carry, <clears throat> to carry out a theoretical review of literature sources related to the issue of performing laboratory work remotely, including through educational information programs. To develop a micrometer model in CAD system. To develop a mobile application in the Unity game engine. To check the operability of the information and educational program measuring parts with the micrometer <clears throat> and to analyze the results of students' success after studying this topic using the mobile application. <clears throat> the analysis of literature source has shown that mobile applications are widely used in the educational process, but few programs have been developed for remote laboratory work in technical disciplines. Therefore, there are a need to develop a mobile educational information program that allows the student to independently study the structure and basics of working with a micrometer. The mobile application was developed as a methodical and practical educational information program. Slide number four shows that main screen on the application. We can see the appearance of the micrometer with captioned interactive main elements. On the right side of the screen, there are buttons, theoretical training, practical training, knowledge test, and information about authors. The object of study <clears throat> of this program is a micrometer. Therefore, the development of the program continues with the design of the electronic model of the micrometer. Slide number five shows the electronic model of the micrometer developed in CAD system Compass 3D. The educational information program was developed in the Unity 2021 game engine. Slide number six shows the layout of the main screen of the application in Unity. We created a new scheme and placed all the elements of the main screen on the application. Slide number seven shows the practical training screen on the mobile phone screen. The main part of the screen is occupied by a training video. It explains all the details of working with the micrometer. At the bottom of the screen, there are control buttons to start, pause, stop the video and slider to rewind it. At the bottom right is the back button to return to the main menu. Slide number eight shows the knowledge test scheme. Most of the screen is occupied by an electronic model of micrometer and the model of the measuring cube. The drum is designed as a moving assembly of parts, the drum itself, the cap, and the ratchet. By pressing the buttons in the lower right corner of the screen, the drum rotates around its own axis and simultaneously moves to the left or right. That is screwed on or unscrewed. When the drum moves, the micrometric screw moves as well. Thus, the work of the micrometer is simulated. After stopping the drum, you can determine the micrometer readings on the steam scale, 
for the operation of the buttons of rotation of the drum is responsible for the corresponding script. The next stage was to test the performance and implementation of the mobile educational information program in the educational process. Slide number nine shows the results of student performance in the study of the topic measuring parts with a micrometer for 2019-2020. As a result of using the program, the qualitative performance of students increased by 7.3% compared to the 2020-2021. Slide number 10 summarizes the results of the research. The literature analysis showed that information and computer technologies is widely used in the educational process, but we did not find such a training simulator. We developed a micrometer model in CAD system and a mobile application in the Unity game engine. The compliant application file was placed in the Moodle system of the discipline, which allowed students to install the application on their phones. During distance learning, Using the developed application, the percentage of qualitative success of students in laboratory work of the topic measuring parts with the micrometer increased by 7.3% compared to the same period of distance learning without the use of this application. This report is over. Thank you very much for attention. Uh, many thanks for your report. Uh, I see uh, Alexander Vasilyevich, Irina Mikhailovna here. Uh, so uh, it seems to be uh, at least some question to this talk. Uh, dear colleagues, uh, your questions, please. All questions, remarks are welcome. Yes, uh, a question in a chat uh, from uh, Yuri Nikolaevich Pogachkov. Uh, is a mobile application to teach students to measure with a micrometer available to test? Hi, everyone. Uh, I'm glad to see you. Mm -hmm. uh, yes. Uh, uh, yes, students uh, use this uh, application uh, in uh, your student to uh, study to uh, study uh, micrometer. Uh, she he uh, he can uh, download uh, application uh, from uh, site and uh, can. Uh, uh, can play uh, uh, this uh, application in uh, own uh, own telephones. Uh, 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 I I, I uh, detail my question. Uh, can you give us the link to download this application to to test? It? Uh, they can uh, screenshot from uh, own uh, telephones uh, and then uh, they uh, uh, send uh, this screenshot to your teacher. And no, teacher... Not, 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 not this question. How can I use? I want to use. I Now I try to make such... Uh, uh, Yuri Nikolaevich, uh, uh, try to uh, some link. Yeah, uh, yes. You, uh, to download this application. Yes, to test yes. In, in his own <laughs> flat. Uh, yes, but and uh, I try to to do hybrid laboratories, and uh, it's interesting me to to see something uh, um, solutions uh, how it works. And uh, maybe it can be used in other space as you use it. Is it free if you can give uh, me or us uh, the link? It will be good. Uh, you, 
you may uh, uh, my contact uh, in uh, Sergey Simriko and uh, we uh, we make link uh, and uh, okay I write to Sergey Simriko mm -hmm. uh, moreover this link uh, are all, is already in the uh, forth forthcoming article uh, of uh, Alexander Vasilyevich. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, so uh, less uh, than two months, uh, all can use uh, okay. this. Okay, okay, thank uh, you. One more question from uh, Nadia Paulina Kazachenko. Uh, what unexpected challenges uh, did you face while developing the app? Um, uh, yes, <laughs> uh, uh, it's uh, uh, we. Uh, we also testing uh, this application uh, because um, uh, each uh, student have uh, different mobile and uh, this mobile have um, uh, own uh, screen device uh, um, uh, and uh, uh, this uh, this is a problem uh, to to testing uh, application and uh, now uh, we uh, uh, we have uh, uh, many uh, many devices uh, uh, which uh, uh, are testing uh, and uh, we um, uh, changes a, prog a program uh, to the uh, next uh, to the use the next uh, year. Uh, will uh, 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 screen size uh, uh, it's all uh, a trouble uh, uh, thank you Alexander Vasilich uh, thank you Nadia Parvina Yuri Nikolaevich um, I would like uh, to um, your attention uh, uh, that uh, yesterday uh, we have at least two talks at the workshop on digital transformation education uh, which uh, not only um, uh, highlight uh, the problem of youth uh, mobile devices in the no, our kind extreme distance education uh, without power supply without uh, any any kind of connection uh, or else uh, but uh, it's um, an example of uh, a real distant control but by a real equipment uh, which um, can touch it to the um, uh, teacher's uh, notebook uh, by uh, his or her uh, students uh, during distance education. Uh, it's a talk uh, of uh, Bogdan Bogdanovich Sus. Uh, in day or two, uh, I will uh, Andrei Mikolaevich converts uh, all video presentations, and uh, you can see uh, this talk, uh, and also you can contact. Uh, with this team. It's an um, uh, Institute of Electronics of um, Shevchenko, Taras Shevchenko uh, National University of Kyiv. Uh, thank you uh, all. Uh, we are waiting uh, more questions. Um, at the moment, uh, you can see uh, also an example of another works of Alexander Vasilyevich and team. Uh, it's a, a very fresh article uh, <laughs> published just uh, yesterday. Uh, some highlights on uh, a problem of testing uh, of such kind mobile application. Um, you can see in this article. Uh, so, uh, thank you. Uh, any other questions? No, uh, at the moment, no questions. Thank you uh, one more time. Uh, and uh, we need to go uh, further and further. Uh, our next presentation no, <laughs> our exciting Ludmila Eduardovna Grizon uh, already online uh, development of the information system for navigation in modern university campus. Um, oh, so, uh, Andrei Mikolaevich, uh, can you start this presentation?
Uh, many greetings to all the participants. Yeah. <clears throat> Hello to everybody. I'm happy to greet all the participants of the conference on cloud and immersed technologies in education. The topic of our presentation today is the development of the information system for navigation in modern university campus. Uh, I am happy to greet the authors of uh, our work. Uh, there is Professor Lyudmila Grizun, it's me, my colleagues, Professor Alexander Shcherbakov and master student Bogdan Bida. We are happy to uh, mm -hmm present information systems department of Simon Kuznets, Kharkiv National University of Economics, Kharkiv City, Ukraine. Uh, so uh, we are going to cover uh, urgency of the research, uh, theoretical framework, stages of the system development, results, uh, discussion, and prospects of our work. Uh, so the urgency of the work is caused by some factors. Modern universities today are important educational, scientific, and cultural hubs that are daily attended by a large number of people on different purposes who are unfamiliar with the location of its buildings and their topology and have a need for convenient navigation, which makes urgent the design and development of the appropriate Mm -hmm. appropriate information system for navigation. It's necessary to search, on the other hand, efficient solutions for scientific and applied problem of indoor navigation, which has been getting urgency recently, but hasn't been solved in full measure. Indoor navigation as a problem means uh, detecting objects and our attention uh, inside of the buildings using radio waves, uh, acoustic signals, uh, wireless networks and other means. The challenge of such navigation is that each building where it's necessary to orient must have special devices config to work with the navigation system. It makes the development of such a system expensive and long term and also adds uh, certain difficulties to its testing, maintenance and expansion, uh, expansion opportunities. On the other hand, Indoor navigation technologies based on the processing of visual images as well as QR codes are underused and forgotten nowadays, although they require less uh, investments and have significant prospects and advantages. In addition, the analysis of the functionality of existing systems for indoor navigation testify their limitation, limitations which cause the search of different uh, approaches. The theoretical framework is made by the analysis of the applications which realize similar functions of the subject domain, the approaches of, to solving the mathematical problem for the shortest path, searching graphs, and technological solutions of digital maps builder. Uh, so, in terms of the uh, of the analysis of the facilities of the selected services of indoor navigations. Uh, we have to admit that uh, we analyzed set of them according to some criteria which you have on the screen, the root building functionality, adaptability of the interface price and many other um, um, criteria. Uh, based on this criteria, we analyze the facilities of selected services of indoor navigation, we, uh, which are used um, uh, all over the world in different universities in, and in different establishments. Uh, the result of our analysis, uh, we have to conclude that despite the significant functionality, these indoor navigation services have the following set of um, limitations. Most of the analyzed analogous are able to provide navigation inside a specific building, but they are not suitable for use in other premises. At the same time, they do not have a sufficiently developed functionality for extension and refinement. They do not provide users with language localization, and they are either web services or mobile applications. So this limitation cause uh, the search of appropriate uh, algorithmic um, interface and technological approaches to design of uh, information systems, and they were taken into account uh, determining the functional and non-functional requirements for our system. In terms of algorithmic solution, we analyzed the uh, problem of uh, 
find in this shortest past and to solve uh, this specific practical uh, problem an appropriate analysis was conducted to select an adequate search algorithm among the, among such well-known algorithms uh, the extra uh, Bellman Ford fluid uh, Warshall and other uh, the main selection criteria for this problem are the properties of the graph as well as the execution time of the algorithm as a result there was selected fluid Warshall algorithm which uh, works based on the uh, dynamic programming methods uh, so, uh, in terms of uh, found interface algorithmic and technological solutions, we would present the following. The, what, uh, it was done the specification of functional requirements uh, based on the analysis of the use cases. In particular, uh, the set system for navigation has to supply for a user uh, such facilities like language localization settings, selection of existing location on the interactive map, determining the location of the user, and uh, the set of other important functional requirements. So, due to these requirements, uh, we uh, try to find out technological approaches and uh, the technological instruments uh, will select it like this one angular as a framework for SPA web apps uh, development and the set of libraries uh, the general architecture of the navigation system was uh, elaborated as you can see uh, that is the system of uh, Four interconnected modules, a graphic module, module of detecting users' locations, shortest path search module, and the module for uh, the visualization of the search truth. A uh, graphic mod, a module uh, plays a key uh, role uh, in the uh, in this uh, main architecture of the system. Uh, it uh, serves as an intra mediary between the user and the entire logic of the application including data processing and execution of complicated algorithms of detecting the user uh, location and visualization it provides not only the appearance of the application together with the means of interaction but also the logic of interaction of data related to the visual part of the system uh, so, uh, it is uh, the set of interface elements and uh, program code, and uh, in terms of uh, the approaches to development of the graphic module, uh, the viewer selected uh, basic main principles like implementation of the interface control components in the form of the special uh, files, implementation of the adaptive user interfaces, a grouping of all control elements uh, with a additional display logic and some others which you can see on the screen. Uh, so the interface solutions also include the interactive map generation by digitalizing flow layout of university premises uh, with the use of editor Adobe uh, Illustrator. The results of uh, such digital digitalization are used for interactive maps building and sent to the application of vector graphics. A map was obtained for each flow in the form of a document with its own syntax and rules, which describes the corresponding responding graphic elements of uh, the image using attributes and formulas. It provides dynamic interaction with uh, such a document using program code and it has advantages in terms of uh, loading speed and image quality and adaptability and flexibility of the whole navigation system which is really important uh, so in uh, terms of algorithmic solution the key role is played uh, by the shortest pass uh, search module its architecture you can see on the screen so as a result of the um, development of all of the components and all of the modules of the system, the functionality of the university navigation system can be characterized as uh, following. It allows free viewing of the scheme of the university premises, change of the current flow, change of map scale, finding the shortest route from the start point corresponding to the physically located QR code to any accessible university location, scanning of QR code 
wall, central the map, localization of the user interface in three languages, and some other uh, functions. Uh, among them are important additional functionality, like facility to scan your codes with third-party part, third party software to move to the navigation system, the ability to download a web application to a mobile device from the user's browser, and uh, use it in similar way as native application, even offline. In addition to the loca location of the QR code itself, a user can also put any final code point or start point in the QR code and this significantly expands the areas of use of QR codes for our system. The episodes of uh, work of the navigation system with some built routes you can see on the screen. Uh, so, the navigation system was implemented into the um, educational practice of Simon Kuznets uh, National University of uh, Economics. Uh, QR codes uh, were placed in relevant uh, locations of the university premises, which enables university visitors to access the system with their smartphones and use the functionality. Uh, feedback from the system users was collected and analyzed. Uh, users were asked to fill in a survey uh, form evaluating the quality of implementation of functional and non-functional requirements for the system on five-point scale. So you can see here the um, QR code to access the application and QR code for the form. As a result of uh, the analysis of uh, users' feedback, they elaborated the ways of the system improvement. Um, mostly uh, users gave uh, positive feedback, but uh, among which is the uh, acceleration of application loading, in implement the possibility of sharing a link with an already built route, and to provide the quality of the animated visualization of the uh, um, late uh, route. All of the implementation uh, improvements were in, done, uh, elaborated, and implemented. And uh, um, in terms of conclusion, we would like to say that in the progress of the work, there was developed the navigation system, which was implemented into the educational practice of the university. Thanks to the proposed algorithmic uh, interface and technological solutions, during the design, it was uh, possible uh, to overcome, overcome the main limitations inherent in uh, similar systems implementing indoor navigation. Uh, the assessment of navigation system in comparing with other analogous makes the prospect of our research. Thank you for your attention, and we are ready to answer your questions. Hello, dear colleagues. My name. Hello, Dargimna, and uh, we have uh, a first first question uh, in the chat. Uh, is uh, your application connection with geoposition systems? Um, uh, so uh, the matter is. Um, now we are answering all of uh, our questions today. We have uh, our main developer, I'd like to say a bit, uh, a bit about this project. It was uh, a quite uh, complex and collective project and the uh, student team was working upon it and uh, two professors, me and uh, Professor Shirbako. And uh, today uh, I hope that Bogdan Bida is here and uh, he is uh, ahead of this student team of developers. I hope that he is ready to answer our questions. Bogdan? Can you oh, answer? Send your students. <laughs> yeah, he's uh, Bogdan is master student. Uh, master, uh, he he has uh, recently um, uh, accomplished and defended his uh, master project, and I think that the most technical questions are going to be to him, and uh, I I'd like him to answer it, Bogdan. Uh, but Bogdan. Uh, is asking for answering in Ukrainian. His English is not really perfect. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, Bogdan, any, yes. any, any language. <laughs> okay, Bogdan, can you hear us? Так, добрий день. Ні, наш застосунок не використовує GPS, тому що ми опираємось на навігацію по QR-кодам, як, наприклад, можна 
взяти за порівняння карти у національних парках тощо. Тобто людина підходить до мапи і бачить, де вона знаходиться відносно цієї мапи. Тобто позиціонування відбувається не в реальному часі. Yes, I get it. Thank you. I have another question if I can. It was really interesting. Sure, you to... can. We are ready to answer. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. It is really interesting to work with a group of students. Uh, what method to organize in the work of a group of students do you use? Waterfall or agile? And how it works? <laughs> <laughs> uh, so I have to say that our students were really creative ones, and uh, the um, me and my colleague uh, Alexander Sherbakov, we just um, made our best to formulate the task in proper way. And when the task was formulated, uh, the, stu the students who were volunteers, actually, it was their desire to start doing upon, start working upon this project. And uh, when the, uh, we delivered the uh, task itself to students, they were really interested. And maybe that is just was a great deal of their own motivation, because the task is, uh, on the one hand, quite complicated and challenging, but on the other hand, uh, on the other hand, the students were um, really happy to try their knowledge and to try their both mathematical, algorithmic, and uh, technological knowledge and skills uh, in order to uh, to make something useful for their own university. And it was a really great uh, work. Uh, it was before the war, as you can understand. However, we even tried to um, improve the implication in terms uh, of uh, frequency, of acceleration, in terms of uh, quality of visualization. And uh, really, students uh, are well done. Well done, and they worked with great enthusiasm of this work. Thank you for the question. Thank you. Uh, thank you. Uh, no, it uh, seems to be uh, some kind of remark. Uh, we really, uh, when we use it um, uh, in our application, uh, QR codes, the first thing what I can try to do, uh, it uh, plays uh, s uh, appropriate code in inappropriate place. Uh, so uh, really, uh, the combination of uh, using uh, location-based uh, techniques. Uh, for example, uh, we uh, can try uh, to use computer vision techniques to identify uh, some objects which not QR coded uh, in the university. Uh, uh, moreover, uh, we can uh, make uh, some uh, uh, for for every student uh, some trajectory. <laughs> it's a real. <laughs> location <laughs> and uh, what uh, what uh, the students or a tra and trend in the university it's it can be uh, a k12 students uh, how uh, his uh, or her location uh, can be changed uh, which interesting location um, uh, which attend um, uh, our future students, what we need to place in our corridors uh, or doors, etc., uh, to uh, <laughs> uh, his attentions um, to uh, such object. Uh, <laughs> so uh, a lot of um, directions uh, for uh, <laughs> for our future. Uh, many thanks uh, for your efforts. It's uh, uh, really works of uh, masters uh, in information system. It's it's completely yes. your speciality. <laughs> As <is. laughs> Thank you. Thank you kind, kindly for your attention. So our work, we, uh, tr uh, we hope that we will uh, accomplish everything that we have started in proper way in order to, uh, to use it after war in uh, locations of our university and to attract uh, uh, more and more students, visitors, our collaborators, and uh, welcome to Uni Kharkiv National University of Economics, names after Simon Kuznets. Thank you kindly. 
uh, welcome to Kharkiv and welcome to yeah. Ukraine. Yeah, yeah exactly. <laughs> Thank you, Lyudmila Edwardovna. Uh, any more questions? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Questions. Yeah. Hey, we are ready. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Um, uh, do you think about uh, the navigate to connect your uh, system of uh, navigation of the place with the navigation uh, through the subjects uh, what, what what are learning in the university? It it means uh, I think that is a good idea to um, connect this navigation system. And uh, maybe students know where to go <laughs> uh, <laughs> from uh, one week and they know uh, everything. But um, it is uh, very difficult to understand what exists in, uh, uh, in the minds and in papers <laughs> and subjects of the professors and uh, laboratories and uh, others uh, or to which students can connect. They go through the laboratory, but they don't know what is happened here. Maybe this navigation system can be uh, <laughs> connected. Um, yeah, in a way, uh, so thank you for your question, first of all. Uh, Bogdan, can you answer or uh, I will? Um, Okay, maybe I'll answer the, uh, this question because it's rather connected with the prospects of our research. In, uh, in fact, in our plans before, uh, they were uh, to add not only um, to this application, to add not only this uh, QR codes and orientation, but also some um, multimedia, multimedia, um, episodes which demonstrate the location itself. So, for example, the uh, rector uh, rector study, the special location for the conference hall, and uh, some other interesting locations. So, uh, where with the museum, university museum, uh, laboratories, yeah, right, completely, and to add uh, some multimedia content into this application, you know, the uh, students, uh, students, yeah, they are very active and maybe. Um, Current students don't need it a lot, but newcomers, people who arrive uh, in university, uh, so on some uh, occasions, on some events, uh, they need uh, it to learn more about the university itself, uh, to learn more about the uh, facilities which are available at university. And uh, in future, we are going to add uh, this multimedia content. It was um, so, um, planned to do at the very beginning. However, uh, so it's clear that not everything we could do. And in our prospects also to estimate, to, uh, to compare our improved system with uh, uh, analogous. Uh, we have done it partially. Uh, Bogdan's pro master project, we tried to estimate uh, the facilities according to some criteria with analogous. And uh, um, we will go on uh, working upon our application. I, at least I hope so. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, thank you one more time. Uh, I hope uh, uh, we have. Uh, uh, it, it is uh, not um, not a last research, even for this year. This not next. This year. Uh, so, so we wait. <laughs> Ludmila Dardin, the submissions. Uh, uh, at I remember. Thank you. Thank you for a kind <laughs> reminder. Yeah, I am working. <laughs> I'm working hard upon my new submission. Thank you. Uh, if you uh, will have uh, any technical issues, uh, etc., uh, don't hesitate to contact me and yeah. um, okay. Thank uh, you. Uh, all be solved just in time. Uh, yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, and uh, for the first time uh, at this stage, uh, Sverchevsky sisters. Oh, <laughs> I'm sorry, uh, Olena Sergeyevna Golovnia, uh, our uh, next presentations. Um, Thank you. Uh, 
Uh, so um, uh, one minute. Uh, uh, what uh, the title of presentation? Oh yeah, um, interactive service during online lectures for IT students. Hello, dear colleagues. My name is Elena Golovnya. I'm teaching operating systems at Zhitomir Polytechnic State University. Today, I would like to present the results of the research coded my, with my dear colleagues Natalia Shur, Irena Svartchevska, Elizaveta Bailuk, and Alexandra Pokotilo. This is one of the lecture rooms in our university. It looks good. It's quite comfortable. It's well equipped. And it suddenly became empty like many other lecture rooms in many universities in the spring of 2020 due to the COVID-19 pandemic. And in two years, in 2022, it became empty again because of the war in Ukraine. Of course, our education system is adapting. We adapted in 2020 and we are adapting now. Gradually, we even managed to organize blended learning in some cases although a huge part of learning process is taking place online. In this research, we focused on the online lectures. Most lecturers experience a leak of communication with students during online lectures. No eye contact, no confirmation if students are listening, uh, and hard to estimate students' understanding and engagement. The lecturer may demand that students keep their web cameras on during the lecture. However, this approach may, can, uh, may reduce connection stability and cause low quality video and audio, then the bandwidth is not high enough. Conversely, students face another kind of challenge when attending uh, online lectures. Given less control, they may be distracted more often and thus listen less carefully. For the same reason, asking students questions online could be less effective. Uh, students also have limited ability to show their misunderstanding or disengagement without speaking up or writing a message directly to the lecturer, and the latter may be uncomfortable for some of them. Student Response Systems SRS, are known by various names including audience response systems, personal response systems, electronic voting systems, polling systems, and clicker systems. SRS are often used to capture and hold students' attention to facilitate students' experience during classes, to promote their engagement, to make online lectures more person-oriented. While numerous researchers report a positive effect of using SRS, especially when first introduced to students, it is also crucial to investigate ways of using SRS thoughtfully and effectively. The purpose of this research was to investigate students' response systems under application to facilitate in students' engagement as well as overall students' experience during online lectures to formulate recommendations for more effective usage of these systems. At the beginning, the publication's uh, analysis have, has been done. Many researchers explore the benefits of using SRS as a learning tool. At the same time, the authors note that SRS have some disadvantages like financial, uh, pedagogical and technical limitations and need guidelines for teaching staff. The comparison of different SRS has been done. The main functions of such services as Mentimeter, AHA Slides, Kahoot, Poll Everywhere, Slido, WooClap and Socrative were considered. All these services have similar functionality. For further research, the Mentimeta platform was chosen. It has a convenient and intuitive interface and supports different types of questions. The free Mentimeta plan allows an unlimited number of students to participate, so it can be used at lectures for large audience, which is not unusual at Jatomar Polytechnic State University. The service has a limited number of questions per event, but it could be enough when combined with traditional questions through a web meeting chart or students' microphones. 
The experimental part of the study was conducted at Jutomer Polytechnic State University during one semester in 2021 and involved second-year IT students. We investigated their participation in the lectures on operating systems. The control group was comprised by four academic groups on software engineering specialization and two academic groups on computer science specialization. The experimental group was comprised by one academic group on computer engineering specialization and two academic groups on cybersecurity specialization. All these students have had very similar training during the previous three semesters. Meanwhile, the software engineering and computer science students had uh, lectures in operating systems separately from their computer engineering and cybersecurity students. The next slide presents the example of multi-meter slides used for lectures in experimental group. It demonstrates the Mentimeter leaderboard as the results of a graded quiz are summing up. The student at the top of the diagram is going to be the winner as he or she just gave the most precise and quick answer. To research the homogeneity of the sample, the average score on previous sessions for control and experimental group has been compared. The Kruskal Wallis rank sum test has been applied, showing no statistically significant difference between the medians of control group and experimental group. After 13 lectures, students were given an online survey using Google Forms. The survey was anonymous and it contained uh, an identical set of questions, except uh, the experimental group were being also asked questions about their experience on Mentimeter. The distribution of the answers of some questions are shown on the slide. As expected, students in both control group and experimental group reported some degree of difficulty during online lectures. A quarter of students reported they agree or mostly agree with the statement, I rarely participate in discussion during lecture because I'm not quite quite sure if I would look smart and competent enough. Also, most of the respondents enjoyed their Mentimeter online service and about 16% uh, reported a more neutral attitude. To investigate differences between the control and experimental group, we compared self-reported levels of student engagement based on the data from the survey and we also conducted a statistical analysis of the number of students' answers during the lectures, based on the data collected uh, within the lectures. The students of experimental group reported higher levels of engagement, noticeably more often than uh, their students of control group. The comparison of students' answers count per student is shown on the next slide. We may assume that the answers count per student in experimental group exceeds the answers count per student in control group. In order to investigate the existence of statistical differences between control and experimental group, we analyzed the distributions of answers count per student in both groups. Uh, according to the results of the Kruskal Wallis test, we found a statistically significant difference in the number of answers per student in control group and experimental group. The analysis of the results of the experiment uh, and uh, the further implementation of SRS within the next semesters allowed us to formulate recommendations on efficient usage of SRS at online lectures. The recommendations are as follows. Test online quizzes before the lecture. Moreover, it's highly recommended when new question types are used. Clarify quiz questions. Some quizzes engage fewer students than expected not because the question is hard, but because the question has an unclear formulation. Select the relevant uh, question types for each case. Combine anonymous and non-anonymous quizzes. The anonymous quizzes are recommended to engage students who are less confident or answer less quickly. Non-anonymous quizzes attract students who are more active when given the ability to compete. 
add some extra points for students being active during online lectures. The anonymous survey shows that such an approach could additionally motivate some part of the students. Combine SRS with the more traditional way of interacting with students within the online lecture. Students may write the answers in the meeting chart or turn on the microphone and answer orally. This may prevent interactive surveys from becoming too routine for students. And combine various type, types of questions to keep students interested. However, there are some limitations of the study, including the following. Uh, part of Mentimeter quizzes are anonymous and the same student may answer more than once. Therefore, it is difficult to take uh, into account highly active students in this case. And uh, also the research does not take into account students with disabilities who may experience difficulties answering quickly through SRS and may prefer other tools like a microphone. Moreover, we believe that our findings are generalizable and could be applied to lectures for IT students at large. Future studies should focus on the analysis of using different SRS within other course activities like practice or lab classes and as well as choosing the SRS for lecturers on other courses for IT students like cryptology, cybersecurity, networking, higher mathematics and others. Thank you for your attention and if you have any questions I'll be glad to answer them. Uh, thank you, Olena Sergeyevna. Uh, all, all can uh, any questions? We don't hear. Sergei, your microphone. Oh, uh, I'm so, I'm sorry. <laughs> um, uh, the, the first uh, student response system uh, we had worked it was uh, Numina SRS almost 20 years ago, uh, written in old Java, work at, uh, at um, uh, Pocket PC, um, uh, 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 HP Journal. <laughs> it uh, was exciting. Um, uh, but uh, we have now uh, a, a real, um, not only modern, but uh, complete uh, realization. Uh, all um, the tools uh, are, um, can be used by uh, students and uh, uh, teachers. Uh, for teachers, it's uh, maybe useful uh, how uh, he, he or she can um, uh, can control to manage uh, uh, the uh, time during election. Uh, so uh, the first questions uh, is about uh, Mentimeter, uh, Mentimeter no, uh, functionality. Uh, uh, if a teacher can um, to uh, view uh, all results uh, of uh, so short server uh, at his screen uh, in anonymous mode uh, with uh, automatically uh, building uh, charts uh, distribution uh, by uh, different uh, answer or else. Uh, thank you for the question and uh, thank you for the attention uh, to our research, first of all. And uh, answering the question, uh, uh, actually, we uh, maybe we just haven't tested that option about anonymous view only for the lecturer, uh, because all the questions we have been using uh, were presented uh, to the screen uh, for students and for the lecturer. 
and uh, the students on their devices can't see uh, all the uh, answers, the answers of another students, uh, if they are not on uh, the presentation uh, which I I'm showing through uh, my screen share, you know, uh, like um, through Google Meet. So I decide when I want to show them results through Google Meet. And if I don't want to show them, I, I'm showing something else. Uh, like I'm showing my uh, static presentation and they uh, I um, go to another window and show them the results. Mm. Uh, like thank, thank you, Olena Sergeyevna. Um, uh, 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 student response system is a kind of operative feedback. Um, do you uh, really have um, uh, some cases when you need to uh, make your lecture restructured uh, just in time according uh, the student response? Uh, for example, the most of students don't understand some concept uh, which will be, uh, was discussed in previous some uh, time slot. Uh, thank you. It, maybe it was uh, the main reason we uh, decided to use something like Mentimeter because uh, uh, I personally do not like uh, if uh, the lecture uh, the lecturer is just a uh, fascinating uh, lecture monologue it's not interesting uh, so if uh, i personally see that uh, there is no uh, understanding that uh, students don't answer most of the students don't understand some, something uh, or don't uh, answer most of them don't answer the questions i ask properly then uh, I can spend some more time uh, explaining uh, some uh, important things. Uh, thank you, Olena Sergeyevna. Uh, one more question. Uh, no, during uh, my auditory classes, um, the student response system uh, was a kind of tools to <laughs> wake up students. <laughs> we have a class now. <laughs> Um, uh, and um, uh, uh, from my experience, uh, only my experience, uh, is some kinds of uh, rumor. Uh, so uh, I give uh, one minute to make uh, some choices. Uh, correct, uh, not correct, uh, up to four choices, uh, etc. Uh, and uh, students in... Um, um, nearby them, uh, themselves uh, uh, just begin uh, to talk uh, other uh, which uh, answer is correct. During online classes, I know, I know that students have a student's chat. Uh, and um, uh, for some times uh, I see uh, 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 um, in case uh, of ability uh, some um, some attempts of testing uh, when at the second attempt uh, almost all answer uh, were correct um according to the discussion uh, in this chat um uh, uh, of, uh, about uh, this facility uh, i um now uh, only after uh, co course compilation uh, so um uh, it's a uh, uh, evil or it's a good that uh, your questions in student response system um uh, enhance the student communication <laughs> at least which answer is correct it's a, it's an interesting question uh, i think that it, it, it's not evil uh, it's okay uh, it is uh, generally very different uh, to uh, have always fair uh, answers, always uh, answers without cheating uh, when we are learning online. Uh, and uh, 
at our experience, uh, lots of questions were anonymous to stimulate uh, those students who are maybe a bit uh, afraid to answer, to sound not very smart uh, like that. And uh, some questions uh, were uh, like graded questions, and uh, some points uh, were given to students uh, who participated. And mostly there was uh, not like uh, it's a test and this grade would be on our rating table. That was like uh, be active, try to say uh, what you think that may be right. And uh, then in the, uh, at the end of the course, uh, the most active, the, the most uh, precise uh, answers would be rewarded with some extra points. Not much, but, but still. Uh, many thanks, Olena Sergeyevna. Uh, uh, any, any questions, please? All questions, remarks are welcome. Colleagues, dear colleagues, <laughs> where is your, where your question? No. Uh, thank you one more time. Uh, uh, both you uh, and your team, uh, we are glad to see uh, the most of authors uh, and uh, some of them for the first time. <laughs> it's a very pleasure for us. Uh, so, uh, uh, the next uh, talk, uh, according to the program, uh, will be uh, only pre-recorded talk. Uh, Laura Joanna uh, Arco from University of the Basque Country uh, unfortunately can't connect today. Uh, she tried, but uh, um, the technical issue, not only Ukraine, but in Spain also. Uh, so, uh, Andrea Mikolaevich, uh, uh, can you uh, at least uh, this video presentation? Yes. Uh, good morning to everyone. Uh, my name is uh, Laura Papanikolopoulou. I come from the University of the Basque Country and uh, in concrete from the Goa Institute. I'm really sorry not being with you, but uh, I, it was uh, quite impossible. Uh, the subject of uh, this communication is about the possibilities and limitations of social media in compulsory education through teachers' perspective. This communication has four parts. The introduction one, the presentation of the subject of study and methodology, the study results, and finally the conclusions. The 2019-2020 academic year was uh, disrupted due to the arrival of the SARS virus that affected global health. According to the recommendations of the authorities, the educational centers of the Spanish state considered contagious points remained closed during the last quarter of the school year. In such a situation, to safeguard the training and uh, socialization processes of the students, the use of digital media was chosen. Teachers and students used these tools to be able to maintain a link of uh, interaction and continue with the training and socialization processes. The objective of this study is to understand the possibilities and limitations of social media in teaching processes as the only communication channels in compulsory secondary education. During the months of confinement, compulsory secondary education was fully based on the possibilities of digital social media. Therefore, this time period is significant to understand the current situation and the possibilities and limitations of these tools. The survey was sent to all the educational centers of compulsory secondary education 
without making a distinction between public, private or subside schools. Specifically, contact was made with uh, 437 centers, centers and we received 189 responses. The questionnaire provided to the centers consists of 30 questions, all of which require a mandatory response, which are divided into two blocks. The first block contains questions related to the practically of social media and the availability of resources. The second block is made up of questions about the impact of lack of face-to-face uh, -face classes. The exclusive use of this media and the confinement in social and emotional aspects of students. All questions are closed in order to obtain accurate data and make it easier for participants to complete the survey, since open questions require more time to answer. Each study center presents uh, its own speed in the digitalization processes prior to the pandemic. Therefore, the material used in the centers uh, may have certain digital parts, but it is mostly suitable for face-to-face -face classes. In this regard, with the uh, sudden interruption of educational processes and the full introduction into the digital environment, teachers faced the shortage of uh, adequate teaching materials, creating the need to e quickly adapt the material used to the new demands. Despite the efforts of teachers, educational centers and public administrations in many cases it was not possible to adapt the available material in the required time. Likewise, the technological devices to continue with the training processes were not adequate in all cases. The sudden suspensions of face-to-face uh, -face education did not make it possible for educational centers and students to have the appropriate devices. In addition, the confinement uh, situation affected sectors other than education as a consequence. Many mothers and fathers were teleworking at home. Therefore, the devices were not always enough for all family members trying to best manage the resources. Along the same lines, mass teleworking on an unprepared system caused more problems than organizing, organizing devices. Teleworking from different sectors loaded internet lines, complicating the continuation of work with an inadequate connection. In addition, due to the student uh, teleworking of various family members, not all students had an adequate study environment. In social aspect, teachers were present and accompanying the student in transition. The new demands and the need to help students to adapt to the new system increased the working hours of the teaching staff. They indicated that it was possible to continue with their tutorial tasks without much difficulty, but uh, that they required more hours of attention. Specifically, 98.1% of uh, teachers say they had to work more hours than before and increase contact with students. In, er in order to achieve good coordination, maintain a common life of teaching and deal with emotional and social aspects of students, teachers and specifically tutors need suitable communication. Teachers were satisfied with the communication devices and ensured that they had fluid communication with the rest of the teachers and it was possible to coordinate with their peers through social media, although this increased working hours even more. Despite uh, the communication and coordination of uh, the teaching uh, staff and the possibilities offered by social media, Virtual classes could do not provide the social and emotional contributions that face-to-face -face, uh, classes offer. 
the students sold a certain commitment by attending classes and handing uh, in uh, their homework. Specifically, 56.4% of the teaching staff are satisfied uh, with the commitment sold by the students. However, the commitment sold uh, was not enough to maintain the desirable academic level. 80.3% of the teaching staff observed a decrease in the academic performance of the students that can be perceived even at the beginning of the following academic year. The lack of participation on the part of the students and the physical uh, distance made it difficult for the teachers to prevent emotional discomfort and socialization problems. These difficulties and the limitations presented by the exclusive use of uh, social media increased stress in both students and teachers. The results of this study concludes that the possibilities of social media made it possible to continue the processes of educational and socialization of the students. Without the contribution of these tools, it will be impossible to continue and uh, the impact of students will be, will be even greater. However, the educational sector was not prepared for this radical change. During the period of confident, teachers perceive a negative impact on both academic performance and the emotional state of the students. Without, this, without the diminishing the value and contribution of social media and uh, ICT during this time, it is concluded that these tools, educational sectors, teachers and students are not prepared for full distance education. In addition, even if uh, the devices and material were suitable, it would still be pending to satisfy the socialization needs of the students, since secondary school students need face-to-face -face contact with their classmates and teachers. Thanks so much for your time and patient. Uh, uh, here I leave you my mails in case someone wants to contact with me for further information or questions or whatever. Thank you so much. Have a nice day. Uh, definitely excellent. Uh, Laura Joanna, um, at the last moment, uh, sent uh, um, not only your video talk, uh, but uh, your prepared article uh, for the first common issue uh, of uh, CTE uh, workshop proceedings. Uh, so, uh, at least in two or, or three weeks, <laughs> we have, you have ability uh, to uh, read um, uh, this research. Uh, moreover, uh, the researches on the, uh, the social media in education, uh, it was a big work in, in our leading uh, research institution, uh, the Institute of Digitalization of Education um, <laughs> of the National Academy of Educational Sciences of Ukraine. Of, of, of. Um, at the moment, uh, one of the uh, leaders uh, of this institute, uh, Alexander Yurich Burov, uh, with us. Uh, Alexander Yurich uh, is a guest research at Vienna University at the moment. Uh, Alexander Yurich, uh, uh, I would like. Um, uh, I'm very glad uh, to see both uh, your uh, articles in uh, um, uh, our editions. Uh, for the last year, uh, your work on a synthetic learning environment is a really leading uh, world position. Um, I 
I definitely I am happy uh, on uh, the decision uh, of your boss uh, and um, uh, Olga Pavlovna uh, to withdraw uh, your uh, work uh, on uh, virtual learning environments, uh, advantages and drawbacks for the health and efficiency of student activity. Uh, but uh, definitely, if you have uh, some minutes to introduce this research, uh, uh, I and uh, all participants uh, be happy. Mm. Uh, good afternoon for everybody. Uh, really, unfortunately, we had to cancel our presentation because of uh, review, <laughs> reviewers <laughs> view on our uh, situation in our article, but uh, generally why we stop, uh, why we would like to focus uh, attention of our readers, our colleagues uh, on this topic, because it is uh, very, from our point of view, it is very important to, to understand what is behind virtual and, and or augmented learning environment uh, from point of view of possible disabilities and disadvantages for health and efficiency of student work. Um, but uh, the situation <laughs> happened as it uh, happened. Uh, so we uh, don't, we decided not to present, to make uh, our presentation. Maybe in future, maybe uh, some other journal will publish these results. Um, but it is was strange because we tried to generalize, first of all, to generalize all negative and positive features of implementation of virtuality in education, in uh, synthetic environment. And as the one side of our work, and the second side is and would be, <laughs> if we did this, um, would be recommendations how to avoid negative impact of virtual reality. So this very briefly, <laughs> uh, very blue, uh, as a general concept, as a general idea. But uh, in any way, I'd like to pay your attention more and more to possible negative um, consequences of virtual reality and augmented reality implementation in uh, educational process. Many thank uh, Alexander Yurich for your focused view. Uh, moreover, uh, the, uh, the your institute uh, now got a grant from the uh, National Academy of Educational Sciences uh, on the uh, theme of synthetic learning environment, no augmented reality in education, um, etc. Uh, so uh, we'll be waiting for your research. Uh, in all our edition. Uh, I'm sorry for uh, any uh, inconveniences in uh, regards of reviewing, but uh, it's a big conference, uh, an external reviewer uh, can uh, make a very different views uh, on the problem. Yeah. Uh, it, it happens. <laughs> I'm sorry, but... <laughs> no. It's happened. Uh... Mm -hmm. Really, I understand, uh, but uh, uh, it is necessary to be polite to view viewpoint of peer reviewers, because I am complete the same <laughs> duties from time to time. So I understand that we can uh, differ from, with our viewpoints on any problem. Okay. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you.
<laughs> for the next time, for the next time, maybe, uh, maybe. many thanks. Um, uh, according to the uh, conference programs, uh, we have uh, some more uh, talk, uh, but uh, unfortunately, uh, due to different reasons, uh, they often uh, are not present, uh, not the uh, final paper, uh, nor um, uh, any kind of presentation. Uh, so uh, I think that our program uh, no, almost ended. Uh, I would like one more time introduce uh, all um, uh, conference chair uh, which uh, present uh, here. Uh, for the first of all, uh, Gennady Mikhailovich. Gennady Mikhailovich uh, had a a uh, uh, quite unstable um, connection. Gennady Mikhailovich Kravtsov uh, is in her son now. Uh, in uh, he returned to uh, yeah with the university, but um, uh, uh, all well-known problems. Uh, um, the yeah uh, on the line of fire. Uh, uh, our next uh, conference chair, Olga Pavlovna Pinchuk, uh, for some minutes ago, uh, she at last have uh, a kind of uh, unstable internet uh, connection. Um, uh, for the four days, uh, in um, both in uh, her home, both in work, uh, are uh, uh, absolutely uh, any power supplies, uh, any connectivity. Uh, our uh, next uh, team member, uh, Tatiana Anatolyevna Vakaluk, uh, she is in uh, um, uh, her personal <laughs> black box in uh, Zhitomir now, uh, but uh, yesterday uh, she uh, sexually conducted exciting workshop on uh, digitalization of education. Uh, Andrei Mikolaevich Struk, uh, our uh, long year uh, conference child, technical support, etc., etc., etc. Many thanks, uh, Andrei Mikolaevich. Uh, uh, we had today and our uh, great reserve channels from Germany. Uh, it was uh, Natalia Valerievna Valko. Uh, she tried uh, to support uh, in the case of a total blackout of Ukraine in our conference. Uh, one more chair, Irina Sergeyevna. Minty, uh, which also uh, headed the conference uh, process. Uh, Maria Pavlina Shishkina uh, was uh, the head uh, uh, together with Gennady Mikhailovich Kravtsov and uh, Maya. Um, uh, Volodymyrovna Marienko, uh, the pre-conference uh, workshop uh, on the uh, open education. Uh, it seems I don't forget um, any of us. Uh, no, uh, my apologies uh, for uh, any problems uh, in this regard. So uh, we just, um, our program just finishes. Uh, Dear chairs, uh, have you uh, uh, any ending words or not ending uh, of, on our continued words? Uh, Andriy Mikolaevich. Uh, thank you very much, Sergei Alexeyevich. Uh, thank you, everyone. Uh, who, uh, uh, today is um, uh, was with us uh, for your research, for your presentation, uh, for your work uh, in uh, this hard time. And uh, see you later on the our uh, scientific events. Thank you, Andrei Mikolaevich, uh, Irina Sergeyevna. 
Many thanks uh, all participants and uh, see you at the next conference. Glory to Ukraine. Glory to Ukraine. Yes, definitely. Uh, uh, any other talks? Uh, maybe uh, do we uh, ah family uh, photo, all... family photo. <laughs> Can you can please <laughs> we make a, a traditional screen So, uh, see you next time. Goodbye. Yes, see you later. Thank you very much for the work. Thank see you, you for later the time. in the next conferences. Bye bye. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Bye bye.